Hello and welcome to episode 429 of the Awesome Comics Podcast, the place where the small press makes one hell of a big noise. My name is Vince Hunt and joining me as always is the creator of the comic series Vanguard, Dan Butcher. Hello. And the man to whom jet lag is nothing. I spit on your jet lag. <laughs> it's Tony Esmond. Man, I was so tired this week. <laughs> why, the fuck did, why the fuck did I get up at half three to talk to you two turnips? What was oh, I doing? I know, you're an absolute yeah. mad lad. <laughs> that was a mess. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> but yes, Tony is now back in Blighty in the good old UK after his Baltimore and SPX adventure. Um, yeah. If you want to know more about that in depth, then check out our last episode. It's full of full of goodness, as well yeah. as me grilling Dan about Vanguard. And oh, yeah, it's a good episode, it. boys. Yeah, yeah that was, listen to that on the Cheers, plane dude. back. Yeah, hey, yeah, there yeah, you yeah. Go. yeah. Okay. I think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna cover the Sunday as well a bit because we didn't get yeah. to cover the Sunday, yes. really, which yeah. which had some interesting facets. Yeah. yeah, and there's a there's a couple of interesting things to talk about this week, and it's just a bit of awesome comics talk. It's just the three amigos here to just uh... maybe maybe a little guest interview slid yeah, in as well, don't we? Oh, don't spoil the oh, surprise. Right, spoil sometimes, it. sometimes you want. Right, calm down. You might give them a bit. Of <laughs> I, mean, I mean, don't say the name yet. But no, yes. I'm not uh, but um, yes, got a cheeky little. He's just messaging me though. <laughs> <laughs> what to see if it's already in? Um, <laughs> uh, oh, in not like that. <laughs> oh dear! Already, I mean, it hasn't even been three minutes, gentlemen. Come on, <laughs> come on! You know it goes bad with the three of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. In a hotel room. Yeah, you know what's never bad though? Our sponsor, Comic House. house. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They are an indie comic marketplace that loves indie comics as much as you do and as much as we do. Perhaps and, more. Uh, well, possibly. I'm, I mean, Dan's, Dan's on fire today, isn't he? He, he, he is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> certainly if you if you out there are listening to this show, there's a good chance that you love indie comics because we talk about them a fair bit on this show. I, th- I think we can all agree. And if you yeah. go to comichouse.com, you can see there's a huge selection of titles on their database. Mm. If you're a creator, you can uh, and self-publish. You can list your book on there. It's no avenue to get the work out into the world. As is the digital comic house app, basically on Netflix for comics, only three pounds a month, and you get access to an enormous library of digital indie comics that's being great. It's growing all the time. Dan, what's on there at the moment? We got Contracts Zero by Envision Comics UK. Mm. John Lee Nonley, Volume One, Issue Two. It's the great. That's Christmas not easy to say. Crossover. I know, John but Lee. I loved hearing Dan say it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. John John I'll read the synopsis for this one. Please do. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, I had to put my drink down. I was just about to drink. Down. Like, what am I doing? Right. What, Here we go. what should you do in your second issue of a new comic series? Do a crossover of characters form co- from I was going from comics that won't release for a year, and some form comics that will never be released. Uh, hey, no one ever said we did things the right way here. Just do it in some way that gets a book completed. This book is an epic Christmas crossover as the John Lee characters interact with Pot and Kettle from Inanimate and Sergeant Blinky and sent all awesome stunts. Fire up the lawyers, Vince, from Sergeant <laughs> Blinky and his brigade of the fantastic. Tony, do you um, think, do you think, I don't know what's going on. Do you think Dan's bang, banged his head? Because I'm lost. That's, that I, I, is, I, that, was, I read that as as written. I, I, I think he's just. He's on. He's on so any. He? He's back yeah. on it. There was but, actually yeah. nothing in what he just said that I understood. No, <laughs> his words. Uh, and we've got headless volume one. Per- he's, he's still going. Perfect commando productions. Which he's a, is he's a pro. This he sounds. Is. This sounds better. The story synopsis in this. Okay, one. cool. Let's Ichabod, see that one. Ichabod Crane is a quiet young boy at the Sleepy Hollow Academy in the countryside of New York State. After finding a mysterious lost horse in the woods, while under the pursuit of a merciless school bully from Brom Brom Bones. And a sleepy hollow boy gang, and return it to the stables. You know. <laughs> oh no! Oh god! What's he doing? No. He brings his own jokes up. Yeah, he? Finds himself under the protection, the uh, affectations of the legendary headless horseman of Sleepy Hollow. There you go. There's nice. nothing wrong or bad about that. I know. So, so no, let, clearly lends innocent. Uh, totally lends innocent. Lends us all to think. What on earth was going through Dan Butcher's mind as he was reading that? But he's thinking, "What's a Sleepy Hollow?" I've seen one of them. Yeah. yeah. And he's probably thinking that there's an amazing, there's all of that and more must have been thinking on the that, amazing that, Vince, Comic House definitely. app. And if you want to find out more and uh, find out Who about Who am I on a podcast with tonight? Two pros. 
14 day free when, trial. When, when yeah, someone has to be because you keep <laughs> interrupting me. Um, and you can dive headfirst into the amazing world of small press. We talk about every week. Check it at comichouse.com. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you to them as always. I know We've that got Al Henderson listens show. to this on 1.5 speed. That will fucking spin his head out, you saying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my, what I said there sounded like utter gibberish. Uh, 1.5 speed is going to be even worse. Yeah. <laughs> Should I try and back, talk faster? Play it backwards than... and you become a devil worship. Yeah. That's how I'll, it try works, and, I'll try and talk faster the rest of this episode so Al finds it very hard to understand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you mean, Dan. What, what earth could you be talking about? <laughs> well, Tony, you just sent me the cover there. T- Tony, I, yeah. come on. Me and Dan have had a go. Say something fast, Tony. I can't say anything fast. I've been drinking too much today. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You just throw up. Um, <laughs> Both ends. Yeah. Oh. Awesome Oof. comics podcast. High brow entertainment. Welcome to the yeah. show, everyone. <laughs> Fuck off, Frontline Radio Four. We're here to take your place. <laughs> <laughs> What's your idea of a perfect Sunday? No. Anyway, <laughs> um... <laughs> anal. <laughs> <laughs> So, someone, <laughs> someone out there, please just clip that bit and turn it into a little song. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, fuck. <laughs> we have to be careful, Tony. Don't, don't you know? We this is almost a ten years we've been doing this. Yeah. And you've got to know by now, man. <laughs> what, ha- what is happening? Right, let's right, let's restart. Right, okay. Let's start. Let's start. I'm, men- I'm mentally yeah. restarting. Right, good. Okay, okay, okay. How are you guys? Hello, How's and welcome to the. Oh no. <laughs> Pretend we didn't say anal. Continue. No, <laughs> uh, it's, it's there now. Yeah, um, they're out there. Everyone knows about it. Yeah. So you know the kind of energy we're bringing this week, folks, um, and that's because we're just really happy to be all back in the same room. No, we're not mm. actually in the same room. Although some of you, I do. I missed you guys last week. Oh, bless! It's, it's just me and the bloke doing the noisy hoovering and <laughs> talking to you on headphones. wasn't the same. No, oh, I can imagine. And oh, you went off and talked without me. I was jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it you, feels you weird do. when there's not the three of us. I've got it to does, say, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, um, because then I have to pay attention all the time. Anyway, right, <laughs> 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 Dan, your laughing is on point this week. Every yeah, time yeah, you yeah, chuckle, yeah. I want to laugh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but certainly, another thing I want to do is find out a little bit more because Tony had um, obviously he had his Baltimore and SPX adventure. You had one more day. We spoke to you at the at dawn. <laughs> La, on yeah, it wasn't even dawn. Yeah. It was yeah, three a.m. Like, yeah, the um, pre, I don't, dawn. Yeah. I don't remind me. I told the boys on the Slack about this on the um, the drink and draw. But I don't, have I told you the story about the taxi driver yet? No, uh, no, 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 no. So I got, I got in, I got. So I had to go from Baltimore to SPX, which is about forty minutes. Just, got, just, just got to say at the front, uh, up front. Um, yeah. There will be some comic content. <laughs> so yeah, it's coming. Much. It's coming. In fact, yeah. we're turning this story into a comic. I've already written it, yes. and Fabi's already started drawing it. Amazing. In a slightly more advanced and outrageous way. But mm. so I'm sitting there and watch. I've called an Uber. It's like five thirty in the morning, and there's nobody about. And most of I, I love America. Baltimore, not the nicest of places. There's a few crazy people wandering around asking me for a cigarette right. at five thirty in the morning. Do you know what I mean? But I'm standing outside right. this hotel and. Uh, Called the Uber, and you know you can see it on the map, and it's turning up, and it, it's it stops just at the next road where I can see it, and a bloke jumps out and walks across the road, almost runs across the road, and I'm thinking that's a bit weird. What's going on there? Mm-hmm. And this car pulls up, and the dude, um, quite happy bloke, massive beard, bit crazy looking, um, bit Cheech and Chong looking to him. Do you know what I mean? That's okay, fair enough. Yeah, get get. Yeah. And he goes, uh, he goes. I said, "Oh, Uber for Tony," and he went, "Yeah." I said, "He said, that's my name. My name's Tony." I went, oh, nice one. Thinking that's hopefully going to be the end of the conversation. Yes. You know? And I got in the back, got in the back of the Uber, and he started driving off, and there was no music on or anything like that. And he stops at the next set of lights, turns around to me, and goes, "My friend's got a funny name." I went, "All right, what's that then?" Not wishing to get into any kind of conversation, he went, <laughs> and he went, "Heroin." <laughs> like this, and I went, "I wouldn't want that name, would you?" And he just sort of turns around and drives off, and then he puts this sort of. Um, 80s mix on the radio and we start playing oh, wild ball Duran Duran I, I, I would honestly think I was going to die and yeah, going, as we're driving through like this bit of Baltimore that's people living on the street and stuff it's wild boys and I'm thinking and it slowly entered my head this bloke just offered me heroin I think you know 
Yeah, I mean, what's that about? I've got... I don't know. It was a bit weird. And then we drove past the Church of the Latter-day Saints, their big cathedral there, you know, the Mormons. And it was, it's got these sort of golden towers. And he started chatting to me about that. And I, I don't know if he was a heroin-dealing Mormon. That might have been his vibe in that That's part. quite a stretch. Yeah. So I was telling, I, met, I literally got there just, you know, just for breakfast, sat down, Sam arrived and we had breakfast. And he goes, yeah, Tony, he definitely, he definitely offered you heroin. <laughs> cab driver. Well, I don't know anything about the uh, purchasing of heroin, but is that usually done at 5.30 in the morning? Well, I guess you need it when you need it, don't you, I yeah. suppose? But, you know. I think it's a 24 hour 7 business, Dan. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But they stop for lunch. <laughs> you yeah. don't think, oh, should we get some heroin? <laughs> oh, it's oh, no. After it's, 5.30, it, it's one quarter out all six out. now, so it's, it's shut. <laughs> well, if you have any leftovers, you put it in the fridge and then heat up in the morning in the yeah. microwave. Oh, you've got to be dodgy. <laughs> Sometimes it leads to a dodgy tummy, though, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, uh, you shit your pants. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was my experience with the cab driver. So that's quite fun. <laughs> that was all right. Now, there's a couple of things I wanted to mention to you about it. Now, you know me, I don't care about wearing a mask. Um, I'll wear a mask if people ask me to. I don't care. It's uh, if it's good, if it's the right thing to do, I'll do it. However, Baltimore was maskless, and SPX was masks enforced. Which wow. Was a, okay, that's interesting. Was, okay. was a strange comparison. I'm not saying either was right or either was wrong, but um, it was a strange one. But I just come out of off a plane and at an airport, you know, which was maskless. Um, so yeah. I don't know about you guys. It's an absolute rarity to see anyone wearing a mask. For me nowadays, I think I've seen one or two like yeah. more elderly people wearing one, or one, one or two people wearing on a train. Yeah, yeah. Warren, um, who runs SPX, was saying that he was saying at the table that a, a few people had um, had called in sick because they tested positive, okay. um, who were like volunteers and table people who had tables. And he so he decided to sort of set his mask on. Oh, I'm, I'm, I don't make him wrong. I don't make him right. I don't, you know, I, I wore it because it's right. But it was, he was enforced. Call. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, his, it's his festival. He does what he likes. But the um, if you don't want to wear it, you couldn't get in. I think that's fine. Um, mm. So there's somebody on the door who's saying, no, can you put your mask on, please? And, you know, we all did. You know, the only thing it does do is it's slightly more difficult to um, hear what people are saying. Definitely. Um, and plus, we've got the accent di- difference between me and Americans. So sometimes that's sort of... Specifically, you, know, you and Americans. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, me saying stupid things like, let's go for an Andy Murray. They talk you know, in but- a weird voice. So. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it made it slightly more difficult. Um, but it didn't stop everyone. Everyone hugs each other, you know, at Baltimore. Okay. No, but at uh, mm. SPX, it's a big hugging convention. I didn't think that would be on. Well, uh, so, yeah. There was no social distancing, but there was masks, put it that way. So there, there, okay. there's a little bit of a, a buffer against the virus there, isn't there? You know? Yeah. But not a full one, I suppose. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know what, you, what do you guys think. Oh, you'd be fine with it, I guess, would you? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to fucking kick off having to wear a mask. I'd, I'd rather not. No, uh, but... no, no, I mean, it's it's all about what people are comfortable with. Do you know what I mean? I, I think. Yeah. And also, it's. There's certainly um, people out there who have suffered from like long COVID and all of that kind of stuff. So, mm. it's, it, people who are tabling at conventions have genuine health concerns as well. So, you, I think you've always got to be. You should never be sort of flippant about someone's nah. health concerns or things like that. And if, if they're comfortable doing it, then respect it. It's just, you know, there's not enough respect in a lot of the comics community anyway, so we... we there's not a lot of respect we... anyway, is there? Let's face it, sadly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I just thought it was an interesting thing we could talk about. Do you know what I mean? I've not seen it so far in any of the festivals over here. Hmm. I do wonder that, you know, SPX does tend to be a bit of a leader in the scene. I wonder whether it was something that is being considered for for probably Thought Bubble, maybe the Lakes or something like that, you know? Uh, hmm. Interesting. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it... It depends how kind of things play out over here, don't you think? Uh, like, how the way of... you, they're talking about there being a little uptick, aren't they? You know, um, in the virus at the moment. So, I, honestly, I can't see masks coming back right. in this country, at least. I just don't. I, I mean, don't I mean, we say that. But I could we, be wrong. We didn't think there was going to be a virus. Yeah, that exactly. was in the yeah, you know, um, the word pan- days. the word pandemic used to be something that you put in your story that you thought, well, that's a good yeah, it'd be on idea. like a movie, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, strange things have happened. You know, well, they most certainly have happened. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. I thought it was an interesting yeah. thing too. Yeah. The other, one of the other things I was going to mention, I know I just showed you it before we came on, is um, and it's something you and I, Dan, have experienced previously. At UCAC is producing a manu- an annual or a, a, a magazine uh, yeah. just for the festival. Man, New I York, love New that. York do it. Um, love that idea. 
Yeah, I really because that's like a, not only a collectible; it's kind of like a thing you have for getting being there. Mm. It's in and you can get it signed. Bus. You know, yeah, the people who are yeah. there as guests and stuff. Like Steve Connolly's got a great page yeah. in it. Now, you know, he's... I'm, I'm just going to play Devil's Advocate. I really love them as well. I just want to say that out of the front. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love, uh, especially when it's a really nicely printed and you've got a whole. Mm. It's like a like a souvenir booklet like yeah. you like you would have going to a I mean, theater, this is theater Boston, show yeah. or right. like live sports show or something like just anything like that i'm i'm all for that um in terms of the comics arena um what is the value of these things now i'm not talking necessarily monetarily um these are great things to have but on the whole a lot of the people who go to these conventions do you think it's um it's worth it for many conventions to do this do you know what I mean? Well, mine, mine was firstly interestingly. I'm not sure because I paid a li- tiny little, it wasn't much more for a VIP ticket that got me in it earlier. And mine came as part of the ticket, so I think okay. it depends Thanks on what step. kind of ticket you you could get. You get game free. Right. Previously, with um, for example, UCAC, um, I mean they're they're very iconic now. The UCAC ones, you know, you can almost tell who went to what convention by which ones they remember. Um, but that's a real snapshot of the scene at the time. So you'll find that a lot of them have got Dread, Batman, Captain Britain, you know, um, whatever Cam Kennedy, Cam Kennedy was in one, you know, Alan Davis was in one. And it was very much a, sn- a snapshot of the scene at the time. Um, for example, when Miller came over for one of the UCACs, there's um, a Miller Dark Knight in it. Uh, there's a nice. Watchmen in it and stuff like that. Which are kind of um, well, it's not original art, but they are originals for that booklet. Mm. Um, and I, for me, I've, I, I regularly look back through the ones I've got. Mm. Um, I really, I really do like them. This one was a slightly different affair because I was chatting to Al Henderson about it earlier, and he he went. I think off the top of my head, I think it was 2016. He went to Baltimore. In fact, it was him saying how good it was, which is the reason I thought oh, I'll go to the, this this one. Um, and his was Liberty Meadows, which was the Frank Cho book. Okay. And celebrating yeah. that. This one I got here, I mean, I was like a pig in shit with this one, man, because it was um, it was First Comics' 40th anniversary. And um, I'm a massive for, uh, First Comics fan. I'm, really, I'm wearing a First Comics t-shirt. Yes. You know? So it had a lot of the creators <clears throat> who were involved in the series, um, but it also had a lot of other people in it. So um, Frank Cho does something in this. Cully Hammer, Billy Tucci, Mark Wheatley, Mark Hempel, um, Howard Chaikin's in it, Joe Staten, Tim Truman, Steve Rude, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez has got a page in it. Um, Dean Haspiel, uh, Franco. There's, it's 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 a lot of people, Andrew Peepoy is in it, but there's a lot of people in it who you'd see as, you know, Lock Barry Kitts and long-standing creators, you know, well-known mm. creators. But there's a lot of sort of newer guys. Steve Connolly's got a great page in here as well. So Fantastic. it's it's a book that you can take around with you. And when you, when you know, I should have done it. I didn't do it because I'm useless. And when I got to Steve Connolly's table, it was just us taking the piss out of each other for 10 minutes, you know. But, uh, <laughs> you know, technically I could have gone around and go, oh, Steve, sign this page. David Max here. Oh, David Mack, can you sign your page? Greg Hildebrand. You know, it's like this. I could have gone around getting people to sign pages. I didn't do, but that's a nice little experience. And also a cheaper one, V, I think, you know, mm. for a, a nice memory of meeting people, it gives you yeah. the reason to stop by yeah. the table, you know. Yeah, um, I was going to say you mentioned V about like cons that could get away with it. If it was like a smaller press one, maybe not so much. I don't know. Maybe I, a poster. I, yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't mind having like if you had like a jam piece of kind of the bigger names doing some work there, and yeah, you could go around getting it signed. Yeah, I guess you, that's something. yeah, and you, like for a smaller, a small press or a zine fair, you could possibly do something that, um, if there was creatives who were taking part in it something that you could photocopy do you know what i mean you mm. could you could do on a smaller scale and just staple together yeah. it's a preparation it for the yeah. con it's a lot of work yeah. on the lead up to and this would be like an added yeah. extra i suppose if you had yeah. time you know yeah if you could do like a black and white one on a4 and i said if you went around and got all the 10 figures on there signed by the creators you got an actual proper poster at the front do you think that would work well it's interesting do you remember yeah. um london super comic con back in yep. the day yes. uh one of the um i think i think it was that that had like the sort of leaflet brochure in it for the com- com. Yeah. and i'm thinking of the one that was in the xl it was XL, yep. wasn't it? yeah um and that had spaces for signatures didn't it i think if if, if i remember correctly uh, okay had, like um but and i thought oh that's that's interesting but how many people do that when you've got everything yeah. else going on. I suppose on also you need to have that these days you need to have that caveat that if you offer them the the you know that whatever it's called the leaflet or the book for the convention that they don't charge you. 
Because yeah. some people do. I remember one creator saying, "Look, I got a charge for autographs because it's cost me so much to get here." And I think fair enough. They're not. It's not overly okay. expensive, you know. Um, some people will charge one thing for one thing, and then they'll charge you extra if it's going to be CGC'd. That sort of thing, you know. Yeah. Oh um, right. Okay. Yeah, can you just say sense. something like, "Oh, can you just sign this? Is it going to be CGC'd?" Nope. Because when you see those, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I'm just not in that game or in that mindset. But if you're at a convention, you see people that have like boxes of comics to be signed. Yeah. I just think, don't do it, man. I mean, if I was a, if I was a creator, certainly on, on that sort of level where people bring over boxes, you know, I'd say, well, I'm doing five, and that's it. You know. Yeah. A lot of people so do much. say that, don't they? Yeah. A yeah. lot of people have that on. So look, ten only because there's a queue. Yeah. You know. Look, yeah. Sorry, I think mate, it takes the do. piss out of like if other people want to maybe just want to talk to you and you're. You're sitting there signing books, so someone can kind of, I don't know, not, and, and not also, saying that they will flog them on, but yeah, the yeah. Cyn- the cynical part of me thinks like that though, Dan. You know, there's there's one thing to get. Oh, I've got five of my favourite books of this run to get this creator signed, but then when you're taking an entire run, uh, I, I always think, are they thinking further down? Are they thinking monetarily? Are they, are they going to flog going this? Out? Yeah, yeah. you know, because uh, because if you're going to sell a set on eBay, if they're all signed, then. I, a friend of mine uh, got a night ride around you off of uh, nice. eBay, and yeah. and David Hasselhoff was signed yeah. signing yeah. somewhere <laughs> in Croydon. Yeah, a friend of mine. I wish it had been me. And he he gave it to David Hassel to sign, and he says, "You're not going to put this on eBay, are you?" He was like, "No, no." He said, "If you do, I'm going to come find you." <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So, That's all right. Yeah, I don't, don't mind that. Don't, That's funny. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. I mean, I kind of. I it's a nice annual to have. It really is. It's going on the shelf, nice. like super production values, mm. you know, and really nicely made. What um, content wise was it? People doing strips or kind of like one? No, page single pin-ups? page pinups. Yeah. Okay, yeah, interpretations of different fucking characters. Fucking and then it's just, it, isn't it? It's yeah. just a nice little art book, then, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly that's all it is, man. And it's also lovely hardback. Uh, it's slightly larger than A4, which meant I could put some of my commissions in it, and it, they got protected. Oh, the way yeah, 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 yeah. So that was nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I'm, so I'm, now that I'm sort of free and you know free and clear, and I've had a chat with the boys about how much we enjoyed each thing. You know, me, me, Stroy, and Cliff did all did both conventions. Um, I sort of shout got, out to Cliff Cumber and Matt Strott, friends. Matt yes. Strott, yeah, yeah, just been chatting to them. I'm seeing Cliff on uh, Cliff on Wednesday, Wednesday for a bit of dinner. Is he still? Yeah, here? yeah, of course. He is. Yeah, he's in the country. We saw them both yeah, on yeah. Uh, the drinker draw. <laughs> Cliff did a cartoon comic strip about me. you, yeah. and I've got it. He sent it to me on the Twitter, so I'll, maybe I'll pop that this week because it's great. Uh, that's good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, not that, not that I've, you know, we have discussed it, but this is my opinion purely of it. I think um, I found Baltimore to be a. F- it's a weird thing to say, and it, this might be down to just to my age, but I found Baltimore to be friendlier. Um, okay. Not that Warren didn't come around, who runs SPX. I mean, he kept coming around the table. He's friends with Sam, so he kept coming around the table and, and just having a laugh and taking the piss out of us, you know. Um, but I found. Um, SPX to be a slightly closed off crowd. Okay. Uh, not everyone. I think there's there's a bit of like, oh, we do these comics. We're not into that sort of comics feel. Does that make mm. sense? Yeah. But yeah, I think Baltimore had of anyone could table at Baltimore and be part of it. I think. Mm. Um, okay. So a little bit of elitism, would you say? Uh, a little bit of sort. I don't know. That might be a good word, but I think maybe just yeah. it's they see themselves as a, more of a niche hobby yeah does that make okay. sense yeah so the the awards at um spx were i mean you, the three of us talk about comics what 10 times a day every day we read comics like multiple times every mm. day you know yeah. we've been doing this podcast for years and there half of the books i've never heard of in the awards right, okay. categories okay. yeah that's what i'm not nice saying that we sometimes. sometimes well it's nice to find stuff and i'm not actually totally sure about the quality of a lot of them but i was you know i did feel like saying well there's a lot of comics out there guys you, you seem to be limiting yourself to one little yeah. crowd yeah um but yeah i mean yeah, I found some people a little bit snooty yeah. at okay. that one, um, and, and unlike I did at Baltimore. But it may be just because I'm a certain me, me, you know, me, Strotty and Cliff are men of a certain age, you know. Um, but not to say there was loads. I mean, there was loads of men. God, my favourite person of the whole weekend is Steve Laffler. You know, our buddy now. Um, more of him later, but possibly. But you know, I don't. I don't think it didn't apply to everyone. You know, Eddie Campbell and all these sort of people were super friendly to everyone. Yeah, because um, and also I, I think um, <clears throat> community attitudes might be the wrong way to put it, but certainly if um, 
like you're saying, there's a certain. Not, I don't want to say snooty either, but you know what I mean. That's that sort. Of, it yeah. can work both ways as well. Sometimes you have like, you know, the more superhero, you know, people who do a different style of comics might not feel comfortable within the sort of the superhero mainstream. You know, that kind of that kind of world. But yeah, think, which maybe I, they I, should I, they should give it a go because they might yeah, find they are. You and know, I, I think, think sometimes I think it's counterproductive. I would hope that you know. If it there is a show that is full of like the more mainstream, you know, horror superheroes and all of that, you know, that kind of stuff, um, that the more um, zany independent stuff, a couple of those will do really well because it's a different flavor, it's something different. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, maybe, it, I that, think maybe, maybe that's not the case, but you know. well, I think maybe I got my notes, but I went a bit <clears> early on. So I mean, like I said, I got there early. Me and Sam had a bit of breakfast, and then we we were desperately to, to make we we're desperate to, because Sam had only arrived late the night the previous night, so we're both yeah. like you know tired and, and we're desperate to make sure the books had arrived firstly um yeah. so we went there and we were 10 minutes early and there was there was a lady on the desk sort of handing out passes and stuff um and she was sort of in full flow you know laughing and joking with the people ahead of us um and then we said oh we just want it we're, we're from this company we just want to make sure our books arrive do you mind if we go and check and she just went nine o'clock uh that's all she said and i'm like right okay all uh, right fair enough Mate. Uh, go back to having yeah. a laugh with your friends. You know, it's a bit like that, I think. Maybe. Yeah, so I think, yeah. right, I think maybe okay. that just put my nose out of joint a little bit. I think maybe, you know. Yeah. If you try um, and not let stuff like that put you off yeah. or get you down, do you but, know what I mean? Yeah. But saying that, everyone who came to the table and, you know, either just chatted or bought a book or anything. I mean, one lady just sort of sat there on the on the floor next to the table and, and read a book. And, you know, it was just, it. everyone was the nicest people who came to the table. Mm. I think maybe Lovely. the... The issue might have been just with a few of the sort of niche creators. It was very sort of cliquey, I suppose. But it's inevitable. It's comics in it, man. Yeah, you know I mean? it's a yeah. comics event. You know, it's a collection yeah. of different personalities. You have the, yeah, you know, you, you, fi- you, you find your people in, in, in some kind of ways, don't you? Like, yeah. Um, um, from that point of view, though, the, I mean, so, so it's the best, almost the best. I think we did a couple of LCAFs where um, books flew out the door. But then again, that is a, you know, a no brow festival. Mm. But the, um, I've, I've, it's rare that I've seen books fly out the door like that. So really? we sold it. We we sold every single book we own. We took awesome. to the convention. That's amazing. Which is when has that ever happened? You know, um, um, we had we we had a few like a little tiny pile of like six or seven books at the end of the day, and and we sold them to a comic shop, a local comic shop, um, and they took them away, which was nice. And then we had a picture of me and Sam at the start of the weekend with this table, like, you know, piled full of books. And then a picture of me and him. Well, we tried, this is, uh, we tried to have a picture at the end of the weekend, which was me and him standing in front of an empty table. And unfortunately, I gave my phone to, um, to Falpy to take the picture. And then when he handed it back and I checked later, all it was was close ups of my face that he'd taken a picture of because he thought it was funny. But that's just <laughs> uh, so, that's he's, funny. so he's taken away that moment for you uh, for all time. Uh, well done, <laughs> but that's like, do you remember that time I said, "Oh, me and him were in Toronto," and I said, uh, "Take take a picture of me with all the background and everything," you know, and he's he, and all he did was take a picture of something else that was behind me. Do you remember that picture? Yeah. Well, I, I, to be honest, <laughs> don't give him your your phone. I know so. it's my mistake. Yeah, it's my mistake. All he did all the weekend was take pictures of me and. um Cliff and Sam and Tyrell from a distance doing stupid things like scratching our head or something. And there's one photograph I found where I caught him, and it's just me giving him the finger from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> Tyrell had a really good weekend as well, didn't he? I think. Mate, it? F- what a dude! What a nice dude. So he's. I don't. I don't. No, Tyrell. I'd liked his book. He sent it to me. Um, I got. I got it sent through as an early copy. You know, pre pre release. Um, and his new book Vern came out, Custodian of the Universe, and um. And he sat there, and usually we have creators. It depends who the creator is, to be fair. But so usually they do like an hour here and there at the table sketching in a book. But he drew in every single book, and we had he was surrounded like a massive castle of turrets around his signing area with his own book. <laughs> and he sat there. He kept saying to me, "I'm going to go for a walk." And then someone, I said, oh, "Would you mind quickly doing this one?" He had no problem. Sat down again, drew it, and he never got away from the table. But because of that, he just became involved in art because we had Cliff and Strotty and Falpy and Eddie and all these sort of guys come and, you know, um, sit behind the table and have a laugh with us. And he just became involved in the uh, shenanigans, put it that way. Um, And I gave him a copy of Viz to read on the train home. Awesome. He he messaged me on the way home saying, this is brilliant. I love it. You know, he was a big fan of the in-betweeners. So I think he kind of got 
he Excellent. likes that humor mm. um and um the nice the mate fucking watch out for him fucking love it and he he's an intri- he he said something very interesting he texted us this morning saying i found it hugely inspirational being there um and he was being i'm not gonna say exposed to but he was being shown comics from all different areas so so for example eddie would come over with you know his sort of quite outre um transgressive you know strangers publications and we showed him some of the tribute stuff and i showed him dog boy from laffler and i showed him some um josh bayer books as well and he you know he that amazing different kind of art was being plugged into him and he was he, by the end of the weekend he was saying it's really it's really got me motivated to to do something a little more different with the follow-up and stuff like that really really good yeah really pleasing to have a guy and reactions like that um awesome. Yeah, that was good. And then Sam went on to do some, I think he went to do some talks at art schools. And he, I think he, was there a hurricane? I think he just, just missed the hurricane wow. on the way home. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was lucky. But yeah, mate, I mean, for our scene, I think if you're of a certain, I know we talked about this last week, didn't we? We talked about that mm. sort of, um, there's, there's there's some sort of new age manga, there's some um, autobio, there's some underground, there's some real sort of strangely done indie um stuff i think if you're in that sort of crowd i think sbx would be a good one i mean not everyone sold out i know eddie did at strangers and falpy sold out of electric chair in day one um but i think there were some people who you know complaining about lack of sales but i think it's a it's a good place to get your book out there and um, people turn up at the table i think which is slightly different maybe to thought bubble which isn't known as a big selling convention um but it has the similar crowd. That crowd there will also buy, I suppose, is different. They're looking to cut, you know. When we had people spend three hundred dollars on books in one in one in one buy, you know, at the table. Um, so they were filling up their car boots. Man, like that that's with impressive. Books, yeah. yeah. And and the other one we had, um, which is quite interesting, we had librarians come around. So the libra- librarians in America are a massive mafia. Yeah. They can make and break a book. They have all these festivals going, they get their books into sort of you know legions of of um their libraries and that can you know really make a book sometimes has to be the right kind of book for example hilda would be the ideal case study Mm, you know you know or maybe in waves or something like that i think probably josh bayer's books probably as much as i love the dude probably not but you know this or for example tribute press books i'm gonna say aren't gonna be great for a library unless you want to close the library um but yeah, I think and they they came. We we usually had ten people come up to the table who were like, "Oh, I'm a local librarian. I'm a part of this group. You know, I'm, we're looking to get our stock your books." You know, there's a bit of that going on as well, which was really useful as a way of um, outreach for your books because necessarily they don't buy them at the table, but they will order them off the site, and you can arrange for them to be shipped specially, stuff like that. You know, um, so there's a lot of that going on. Nice, nice. Yeah. man. Yeah, that's re- like uh, we kind of hear about stuff about like the Scholastic and the librarians having so much yeah. power and. Not power, but you know they can kind of get books in front of people because they, yeah. they've got that kind of buying ability. Yeah. I which think is, I think uh, yeah, definitely. I think the big thing is that, and it's something we've experienced as well as a group is um, conventions are seventy five percent the company. Yeah, yeah. We we we've been to some of the worst conventions in the world, but we've had a laugh because it's been the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, with, with Tom as well, and, yeah, yeah. and all these sort of people, you know, you sort of I mean, make it, make it, didn't you? If you yeah, if you not, do, yeah, yeah. And it was definitely the company, you know, Sam, Tyrell, um, Cliff, Strotty, Adam, Eddie, Steve. You know, it was, it was that little crew that really made it for us. I think and that's why it was so funny. You yeah. know we, what we're like. We 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 literally laugh nonstop when we were at a convention. It was like that. Totally. I think. Mm, yeah. yeah, that's why I enjoyed it so much. I really came off a high from it. From both. I don't want to be. I don't want to knock SPX. I just. I didn't feel quite as home there. I suppose. Okay. As I did at Baltimore, but you know, I was coming off a real, real high of a weekend of comics chat. You know, I mean, we we finished sun. We finished uh, on the Sunday because it, it closes at six on the Sunday, and um, we couldn't get an Uber. Um, because we had to go, me and Sam had to go all the way back to Baltimore to the hotels there. Um, and we couldn't get an Uber for about an hour and a half. So we ended up getting back to Baltimore for like half nine and found a restaurant that was willing to serve us, you know, and <laughs> oh. just just sat there like exhausted, sweaty messes eating a pizza, you know, for, uh, for crashing out. Um, that sounds like a convention, all right. Yeah, doesn't it? It really yeah. does. Do you sound like on the way back, you got quite a bit of sleep in? So it was all right. Yeah. So yeah. shall I do the story about the the trip back? Because <laughs> it leads yeah, into yeah, our yeah. next subject, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. Any questions? Any, any thoughts about no, that? No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. 
Um, so um, I flew back the Monday overnight um, and went through security and was sat there putting my shoes back on uh, after the, you know, the metal detector. And I looked to my left and there's uh, Mark Buckingham from Fable sitting there. So, <laughs> yeah, not, not being a shrinking violet, I decided to say, hello, Mark, I'm really enjoying Fables. When's it end? Are you going to do any more? And he's gone, yeah. he's, like, he's gone, oh, fucking hell. Nice. He says, oh, he says, no, we're doing, going to de- definitely do some more and all this sort of things. So I think that's right. So I would paid for um, a, a ticket for the lounge. It's worth doing, guys. You go to the airport, always get the lounge. So you go to the lounge <laughs> and they, you get coffee and that, and uh, they come and tell you when your flight's ready and that sort of thing. And it's, it's better than sitting in those stupid chairs, you know, surrounded by bing bong noises and stuff. So I'm sitting there and then he walks and he says, oh, he says, mind if I join you? I said, no, of course not, man. And I think, yeah, the the artist from one of my favourite comics once showed me. I'm going to say, no, mate, you know, sorry, that seems, <laughs> someone's someone's sitting there, you know. Um, and he comes out and sits down, and um, so we sat there. For, we sat there for two hours talking about comics. He showed me um, a load of double page spread. Oh, you like this, Dan? Because he showed me this, these pages he's drawing. I think you mind. Show me these pages he's drawing from an, an upcoming Miracle Man issue, and uh, and there's a tram in it, right? So what did I say, Dan? Any guesses? There's a tram in it. I said, is that Croydon? <laughs> of course he did. Yeah. And like we talked about last week, we always say things that we regret and all haunt us for yeah. the rest of our lives. And he went, no, it's Sydney. I went, oh, yeah, thought so. Yeah. <laughs> immediately. Tony <laughs> yeah. immediately fucks it up. I love <laughs> it. And, um, it reminds me of the, the, what you said about Cliff yeah, last week. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Um, so... It, it it was just lovely when we talked about conventions and you know his plans and this new your new work he wants to do and we sat there and it and because you can go that you can get beers and stuff so we're getting drinks sitting down and you know this sort of thing and then he goes oh, I'm just going out for a week do you mind do you mind looking after your bag do you mind looking after my bag and I went that's fine yeah leave it there and I'll go through it while you're in the loop just for a laugh I said that because I say stupid things don't you, you know? yeah and he goes oh no don't do that because I was going to give you a couple of prints out of it and I thought this is the best day ever. Yeah, so he comes back and signs like a death print and uh, another one and hands them to me and uh, I said Mark I've got to take a picture of you because no one will believe they'll think it's my usual bullshit you know? that's all yeah yeah so I took a picture of him holding it it was great and then um, we're literally across the plane from each other on the flight back and he's like he's, he's in one side and I'm in one and then on the way back we went and collected our bags together and uh, I got to meet his <laughs> nanny you'd come to pick him up and stuff and yeah <laughs> How's that's that real. for a journey back, eh? How yeah, is that's that great. For, yeah. That is yeah. great. Yeah, so good. Yeah, what a lovely guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think he's a big podcast fan or anything because he'd never heard of us. Obviously, all, anyone who has ever listened to a podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, uh, good yeah. No, no one's heard of us. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. What a fucking nice cap to the weekend, really. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Great yeah. stuff. And it's yeah. and his um, artworks looks amazing. Yeah. Um, and it. He's a he's a name that is in the sort of community yeah. eye at the moment, isn't it? It's not peripherally, isn't he? Because no. um, and I asked him about this. He said he's not. He says the copyright for because his creator owned fables is owned by Bill William. Which yes, is where we're going with this now. Um, yeah. So, did you want to talk about that bit, Dan? I know it's the one you you thought might be worth mentioning. Yeah, well, kind of like there, there was some. This kind of came out of nowhere because I, I didn't realize. Kind of, it seems fables has kind of been caught up a bit with DC, and there's a whole thing with. Uh, Bill's been putting up online about saying he's trying to get somewhere with this and he just keeps on getting fucking stonewalled. And he can, yeah. this anyone he's talking to at DC gets brushed off or passed over and it's just going round and round and round. He's finding it very frustrating. So essentially he just came out and said, right, Fables is now a uh, public domain. Anyone can do yeah. with whatever they want with it. And I was like, wow, fucking hell, that's quite a move because that's a ballsy move. Yeah. That's like fucking nuking everything, isn't it? Like, yeah. right. I'm not going to get anything from this, but neither are you. Because I think Mark put it on the Slack, didn't he? And everyone to a man was, that's massive. That is fucking massive. Yeah, that's a mm. big move. That's and a ballsy yeah. like, governor move, that is. And we, to, we when when I mentioned it, you know, I've, I've sort of been promoting as much as I can fables of like yeah. last year or so. The I've been saying you never see it pushed anywhere. Nah, nah. You never see press for it. Mm. And maybe that was part of his frustration. I don't know that for sure, but I, but I can only guess it. It still sells really well, doesn't it? I mean, it's still. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it, yeah. it's got to be an evergreen for them because it's in its like third iteration of yeah. trade paperbacks, and you know. Yeah, I think it's that kind of. Uh, I don't want to call it infantile. Well, I will call it infantile. Like, oh, they're on the other side of the aisle to me, so I can't 
Yeah, because I think he's... You can't talk uh, about it or promote it. So, well, mate, come on. I mean, I don't, I, but then again, I don't know his politics. I'm not interested in his no, politics. Exactly. I'm interested yeah. in his comics. It's, but it's, but yeah. it's certainly yeah. because um, that book, that IP um, and everything attached to it has been a moneymaker for them, mm. whether it be... Mm. Get They're still going to publish it. It just means that other yeah. people can make comics about it yeah. as well. You can yeah. do whatever. Yeah, you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. Uh, well, yeah. DC have contested that, right. but someone else pointed out the fact that in every book is marked as it, this copyright belongs to. Him. When you, so, yeah, when you get down to the legal nitty gritty, who knows? Depending on contracts and everything else, it's you know, I wouldn't even I mean, begin to know. But if you want to put a fables book out on Kickstarter and then go head to head with the DC legal team. You go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one <laughs> one thing I I think I can say with some sort of not authority, but a situation like this it doesn't happen unless there's a massive failure in communication or something. God, happened. yeah. It's to get to that point where the, the frustration must have built up to a point where it's like, oh, this on, is untenable. I on can't a known do this. title, yeah. on a known yeah. successful title, whether it you know even if it didn't sell very much now. That there was a decade or so when that book was <laughs> just all guns blazing. Mm. Fables. Yep. We all know what fables is, and uh, whether you, you know, people can say, "Oh, well, you know, they're just using Little Red Riding Hood. They're using all these, all these classic folklore tales." But it's the way it's it, they've crafted it into something. It's, yes. it's it's something else. Yeah, there's there's a dense history and narrative yeah. to that now because yeah. you, you know you don't just have what is it 20 odd trades for fables at this point you also have um the fairest you have cinderella you have jack of fables which i think is about 10 trades mm. you know, it's, yeah. it's it's a good few th- shelves of your bookshelf yeah the the, the fables universe yeah. you know and there was a video game although yeah. i think he's saying for the video game he, he wasn't asked about it and he made no money from it i think yeah i mean that wouldn't surprise me um yeah. certain certain adaptions and things like that happening without a uh, creators Con- consent is a is a funny word to use, but um, yeah. but certainly when it comes when it comes yeah when it comes to adaptions and things like that, there are they just can go ahead they just go ahead and do these things, don't they? How many times mm. have we heard a creator going, yeah, I had nothing to do with that? When you think yeah. that they do, you think, oh yeah. god, yeah. You, I mean, it could. Ha- I wonder if any of the listeners out there have made a faux pas when you just sort of said, oh, I love that version of this, and the creator's gone, yeah, I had nothing to I'm do with that. Me. I know it's embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we've done on this fucking show. Yeah. We've done yeah. on this on many interviews. It's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our yeah. hands are not blank. Uh, we're not. Yeah. So <laughs> clean as it were. It's certainly um, it, it's a fascinating situation. Um, and it's interesting more... to see how it develops. There's, yeah. there's axes mm. to, that appear to be ground against him. You know, it's it's the whole thing, isn't it? it? We on the face of it, we look at it, we do have a chat about it on the Slack. We all. You know, to a man, it, uh, people of all different backgrounds and countries and political beliefs and everything, we go, this is really interesting. Yeah. I think this is likely going to be a good move. Yeah. Um, and then suddenly someone fucking on the internet decides, no, he once liked a tweet that I don't like, therefore he's a villain, and it what? all comes crashing around. It just it turns just turns nasty. And, and, and it's, it's, it's funny sometimes, like, these defences that crop up for these big publishers and corporations that are oh, totally i know yeah i don't mad. get it like one yeah. one minute they're sort of saying oh the image union that's fucking great like power to the people like all this stuff and the next minute someone does this and he goes oh this is terrible what's he doing this for yeah. and it's like well you, these surely this is like in the same ballpark because of the stuff yeah. you're for i mean th- so this what's this, the sort of, here? This, this sort of move that this i mean uh, you know uh, take everything out of it um, if you can, I know that's fairly impossible. But if you just look at it black and white on paper, this is a creator basically taking away every kind of profit in in mm. some kind of ways from it. So they're not they're not. It's not like they've done. They've said right. There's a certain copyright now. So even if anyone even said the word fables, I get five dollars for that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, um, no, yeah, 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 yeah. It, yeah. It's almost the the polar opposite of, of things. But like it's that. akin to someone like Bob Dylan going, "Yeah, cover my." cover my songs i want i want to hear what you're doing with them go ahead yeah, or yeah. michael mortcock going oh you can use the eternal champion stuff go ahead yeah. i really want to see what you do with it you yeah. know it's just akin to and that. there's no no claim on it whatsoever from any kind of corporation yeah. to make money out of it yeah yeah and Which williams is... got to be in his i'm going to say mid 60s isn't he at this point you know he's he's probably made a few quid out of fables at this point and yeah. he's thinking 
Ah, uh, no, go on. I'll give everyone else a chance. Have a look at it. Fuck you, DC. Let's just get on with it. You know, and you've got these people who, you know, who, um, who will rail about DC and the Watchmen rights and all this sort of mm. thing. And you think this guy's just said, no, go on. Yeah. It's right. down to him, man. Right. Yeah. Well, it's the fact that like digging for his, what's really suspicious about that stuff is like, it's not just come out of nowhere. Suddenly like there's like, it, yeah. it's like they've all been galvanized into action to sort of say, right, we've got to take this guy down. And it's yeah. like, well, what, where's this coming from? I think part of it is jealousy of attention. I think, a lot of these people are jealous that someone else is being seen as more virtuous than them. Well, we 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 know that there's that uh, the Valerie, uh, I can't remember her surname now, the creator who said like a lot of people were using like uh, certain things as a cudgel to take out potential rivals. Yes, and rivals yeah. So and the, the, she's an ex DC editor. I forget yeah. her name as well, but she was saying she saw it happen over and over again where someone, there's a few people up for a writing gig, you know, or they know they're going to be up to write something. So they use, they go through their tweets or, you yeah, know, right. find something and then, you know, just kick it out in order to I mean, them that, off them as a fucking competitor. As yeah. consumers and readers, that's at our detriment. Because yeah, of course. Then it's yeah. not about like the, how skilled the creator is. It's like, how much backstabbing can you do yeah. to get them out of the way? It's dangerous times, isn't it? it, it yeah. well, dangerous is a strong word for it. You're a hero um, till someone decides you're a villain these yeah, days. Yeah. yeah. Um, because, let's face it, on the whole, outside of the, the community bubble, there's a lot of consumers of this stuff that um, it may break a lot of hearts when I say it, but they don't care. They just, Mate, want, to re- they just want to read the yeah. books. And there's a lot of us who used to be active and now yeah. don't care. Yeah. We like, just want to I, read good comics. Yeah, the, yeah. The, what you're saying there is like the detriment is like you're getting out substandard product, and then people are like, well, what? This is not what I want. Like this is yeah. poor. Yeah. So the quality is poor. And mm. c- certainly, um, it's interesting for me, like the ownership of this and and the mm. discussion about that. That's what's fascinating to me about yes. it. Um, and how it will develop onwards as well is yeah. why I'm finding it interesting. Yeah. What people will do with it. I think that's an interesting fact. Because there are, I mean, level, you... there are levels of the ownership, aren't there? I mean, if you if you take, you know, the publisher says, well, you can't do this, but the creator's like, well, actually, I can because it's mine. It reminds me of, uh, in some ways, um, Bill Waterson, Calvin and Hobbes. Yes. The publisher mm. was probably like, we can make soft toys of this. We could do this. And he, yeah. he always like, no. No. And that frustrated the hell out of, let's face it, tens of millions of dollars that did not get made because that that creator about this creation said no i and and for that there's a part of me that was like oh, yeah there's a good there's I, a good I would have liked so, the soft massive, toy uh, but there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's a good, the there's a good and like, a bad side of that yeah. coin aren't they that's yeah. the thing you know yeah. there always will be of course yeah. there always will yeah. be i'm not naive enough to think that you know everything that is now made by fans about fables is going to be amazing because it's not there's going no. to be some like close up brown eye in there Loads somewhere of truck. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but like if you I, I don't know what if you can make the characters look like the characters what what's the room i don't know I yeah. presume someone's a lot smarter than me and more versed in this subject would be able to say. I suppose it's it's including in the stars. And a lot of the characters are, are copyright free anyway, aren't they? Yeah. You know? But and you can make a Snow White comic, but it does because she can't have a fucking yellow dress I mean, with black we, hair and a blue we, top like Disney yeah, version. Yeah, yeah, we've seen, I mean, Lord knows in the independent comics circles with these fairy tale or folklorish yeah. characters. I'm many, doing it myself with Hercules, aren't I? Ha, yeah. yeah. How many Robin Hoods have we seen? How many, yeah. you know. It, it, some good, some bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can't wait to see another thing about one of the a fairy tale princess, and they draw her in lingerie. Let's have more of those fucking comics. <laughs> I think they're Fuck all on. Uh, yeah. They're all on that, Kickstarter. Hear, hear that, folks? Uh, there's a book that Dan wants to read, so make it. Uh, well, yeah. it's been made many times. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds like you want more, Dan. Yeah, we, well, we're all about giving people about. what they want on this show. Exactly. <laughs> I was sort of going halfway through that. Is that what am I saying? <laughs> I was hoping you were going to go there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, so, yeah, there's lots of those comics. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm intrigued about the whole, um, not the legal aspect, because that makes it sound like um, I have a brain that can contemplate that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, but how, but how that plays out. How that but don't forget out. that legal aspect is going to be different per country that it's applying in as well. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 So and you can yeah. make those comics all day long in Turkey. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. Usually it comes down to the day when it all started, the day when you signed on the dotted line. Yeah. What did you say? You know, Read that's that one contract. Of, that's one of the reasons. I mean, Marvel is as Marvel does. 
and a lot of creators who have created characters, you know, they know going into it now that Marvel have it down to a certain... Yeah, got a save, you, save you good stuff for Image. Well, yeah. what happened to that? Saying, yeah. The Ghost Rider creator guy who tried to get that from Marvel. So yeah. I want to, and he, they just fucked him. Like, now he can't even mention the fact that he's anything to do with it. There's um, there's a whole podcast in that, in that dude, man, on TV yeah. now. Yeah. I read one of his novels recently in Christ. Yeah. yeah. So if you um, kind of like, go, what are you going to do if you go up against the Disney Corp yeah, lawyers? Yeah. I believe a I, there, there was a word balloon episode with a um, lawyer guy talking about that particular thing, wasn't there? Oh, uh, was there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just uh, I bought I bought a bootleg Ghost Rider comic, which uh, was quite interesting. I got given mm-hmm. it by Eddie actually. Eddie from Stranger said, "Oh, do you fancy?" Okay. It? Yeah. How cool is that looking? Nice. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about Ghost Rider. That's the, I don't know why. Um, Think about Ghost Rider when you were talking about the comic house stuff, Dan. Because I, I was thinking, has there been a sort of Sleepy Hollow like take on like Ghost? You know, some yeah. Well, he was uh, he was on a horse originally, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. but you know, has there been a sort of uh, Marvel Sleepy Hollow like take? Because it's such a it's such a popular thing with the American audience, isn't it? That that sort of folklorish tale. Um, I've got a pitch for you. Go on, nineteen no, seventies no. London, Quadrophenia, Ghost Rider. Oh yes, Ghost Rider. On yeah. a moped. So, w- young mod gets absolutely fucked over. Boom. Becomes the spirit of vengeance. On a, yeah. on, a, on a Vespa. Goes around doing all the greases. Yeah. Yeah. Does he, he have, have sex one. with that lady in the back alleyway in Brighton? Like well, doing Leslie Ash from... Uh... Leslie Ash. Yeah, I remember we speeded that up when we first had a video yeah. player at the boarding house. We watched that a load of times. All right, you can put that in there. If you want, I don't mind. Yeah. Go for well, it. Well, uh, talk about... A bit of green onions. onions. There is, there, there is, there is the reference that some of our audience won't get. But Quadrophenia, Phil, Phil, Phil from East, Phil from EastEnders, isn't that? Do you know? That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. And uh, Sting from Scum. Oh, Ray Winston. Winston. Yeah, he's yeah. got a big part in it, isn't he? Yeah. Stings in it as well, isn't he? Bell he boy. Oh God, has this become? Let's a... move on from Quadrophenia. Quadrophenia. I, yes. I might have disrailed that there. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What were we talking about? Yes, interesting times in the world of comics. Um, but I think without further ado, I think it's... Uh, Tony, you brought up a name a couple of times, so we've got a little yeah. bit of audio for people. Do you want to um, feed it in? Well, hopefully this will be the first of maybe another another time because um, Steve's bang up for coming on. Um, so the weekend was spent in the company of all the people I mentioned, along with um, comics fucking legend Steve Laffler. Now... Um, I've mentioned him his books a few times. He's just had released uh, Dog Boy, Choice Cuts and Happy Endings, um, which he, he kickstarted. But uh, he's got a, a he's got a pull list on the back by a certain saucy podcast as well, which is quite cool. Hey. Um, let me just that I was thinking about how am I going to introduce this interview, but I think I was reading the back blurb on this book, and I'm going to read it because it gives you a good sense of what Steve's about. Steve Laffler bohemian cartoonist taps into his unconscious mind and finds his inner dog boy an unruly man child equipped with a golden retriever head reared on the incandescent comic book in innovations of jack kirby coming of age in the subsequent explosion of underground comics laffler sets out to chart his own inky journey marked by a shattering ego death experience behind psilocybin on the cusp of adulthood the artist roots around in his psyche utilizing an improvisational unscripted cartoon method pumping out page after page of comics penciled in a thick non-photo blue line laffler furiously swings at a vision of the sim was it simulneity of of all action reaching for the gold ring deep inside readers encounter a critique of wage slavery plenty of strong coffee a bit of beer guzzling and healthy dose of dose of lowbrow slapstick on this cartoon roller coaster ride laffler's early career improvisation saw and it all turns full flat and saw and it turns full flat but it's well worth the coin to join him on these good-natured spelunking expeditions of the heart that's that's, that's the best that's, back blurb that's I've the back ever read. of the book jesus christ that's the back of the book how that's cool like is a that? forward yeah for and a then, book, right? then some crazy person has written ferociously anarchic when i finally read this series i was ashamed it had taken me so long mr l's style and art epitomizes to me what an underground comic should be he takes chances and never plays it safe get on this that's the awesome comics podcast quote Paul quote on the back but um i mean steve 
we, we went we spent a lot of time with Steve um I know he's a hero of foul piece as well and and we all went around and had a chat with him at his table and um he, he came out for dinner and told us stories about Robert Crumb and playing, playing in the band with with Felina and Mary Felina and you know just you just sit there with your gob open listening to these stories of his you know and, and he has a really interesting approach to comics where he just gets on the page and gets on with it which i think there's a space for in underground comics you know we see this sort of tight plotting don't we in graphic novels and image books and marvel arcs and stuff like that or you'd like to hope so but in this there's a there's a real instinctual attack on a page um and it it it's vi- visually very very punk very strong but he, he knows how to draw as well he also talks a little bit about um 1956 which is a book we recommended about a year ago um which has um a, a progressive trans elements into it that you know um, which are really interesting and dealt with very sensitively uh, in a book about the um, the sort of jazz age and New York salesmen and stuff like that. Re- really interesting. Um, get on it, anything you can. You can find there are some of them on print on demand on Amazon. You can find it on there. But uh, I think Steve speaks better than I will about his approach to comic in. And also at the end there, which is something I have started doing now, is you know we did that question thing, like, like instinctually answer this question, which we yes. did a few weeks ago, didn't we? Mm. Um, I pull a couple of questions on him like that as well. And see how he copes. Yeah, in- interesting results. But uh, I'm yet to hear this. So yeah, have a have a listen to. Uh, so it's slightly noisy because we're on the convention floor, but I think it's fairly listenable. Have a listen to uh, me chatting to Steve Laffler at SPX. Okay, I'm here with uh, Steve Laffler, who um, came out for dinner with us last night, and that was a lot of fun. You know, <laughs> I mean, we almost paid a. Uh, hundred dollars plus uh, per plate, <laughs> but you know, moved on to that udon place. So. We can blame Cliff for that. So Cliff booked a restaurant. We all sat down, happy few. We finally got to sit down, and it turned out to be like the most expensive restaurant in the state, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we like ran off, and we found a decent place in the end, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. No, that was great. That was great. You know, had a. I mean, that was that was good. You know, yeah, it was the good. Spot. Good fun. Yeah, yeah, good fun. Now, good, good to talk to all you guys too, and you know, hang out really. Oh, mate, but, but, well, the opposite is very true because uh, you regaled us the stories of indie comics and you've been about on the scene since, I'm going to say, the light, late 70s? Uh, well, yeah, I kind of, I was in college doing a college strip at uh, UMass Amherst in the late 70s, kind of like making uh, all my bad writing and bad art uh, work to get, you know, my <laughs> 10,000 hours in or whatever. Yeah. And then, yeah, I put out, started putting out comic books. I did Mean Cat in 1981 was my first one. Run of a thousand with a, a badly uh, screen printed cover, but at least I use this garish uh, purple and hot pink ink, so it sold out. <laughs> so where would you sell that? Was it like head shops and stuff like that? Was it or? Yeah, you know, I tried to sell it to uh, the distributors, but they wouldn't take it because, you know, it had a little bit of an amateurish feel to it. Although it, it did have a, a, a pretty dynamic, great cover, even if it was like a bad screen printing job. But um. Yeah, the, the distributors of the time, uh, Capital City, I guess Diamond was just starting, even Last Gasp, uh, you know, they, they gave me positive feedback, but they didn't go for it. One distributor, Glenwood, bought bought it. They bought 400 of those. They paid me and promptly went bankrupt. You know, uh, how many distributors <coughs> does it take to screw in a light bulb? Uh, you know, <laughs> you don't think one, you bankrupt them. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah, yeah, one yeah. distribute and three to go bankrupt, you know. That was the 80s. <laughs> yeah. So, but you carried on. I know you had a brief, a brief period in, when you were in Mexico. You didn't quite do so much, but you've pretty much carried on since then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was in uh, Mexico for uh, 07 to 2016. Uh, I did put out uh, El Vocho during that time, and I did a couple print-on-demand-only collections with uh, CO2 Comics. Uh, what was left of Comico, who uh, really? were a big okay. imprint for a while. Yeah, uh, yeah Bill and Jerry. I love those guys. Uh, but yeah, we did we did print on demand collections with Bug House and Dog Boy, and uh, I toured on the uh, the Bug House collection in uh, 2012. Had a lot of fun, met a lot of great people. But uh, yeah, you know, since they did not have a barcode on those books, they they were not going to the book trade. So consequently, you know, I finally got around to putting them back into print with a barcode myself in the yeah. last couple of years. So you've you've really taken a hold of the whole print on demand. Kickstarter, yeah. YouTube videos. I see they go back about four or five years, don't they? You've yeah. been talking about your comics since then. Have you had to sort of relearn the promotion thing, have you? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I've always, I mean, it's funny. Um, I mean, my dad was like a, a business guy, uh, you know, and I, I don't know, he was kind of in marketing and stuff for uh, high-end department stores. 
And uh, for him, you know, promoting was an art. And so I kind of got a little bit of that from him. I mean, I could have sold Buicks, you know, or at least <laughs> I probably would have done better with Toyota. But, uh, but you know, I, I like selling shit. So it's, yeah. it's fun to figure out, you cool. know. So did you want to talk about your, your sort of main books you've got on the go at the moment? Yeah, yeah. that's that's great. Yeah, this, right now it's uh, uh, Dog Boy, Choice Cuts and Happy Endings is a 300 plus uh, page collection of Dog Boy, the comic book I did in the 80s. I, I did a run of seven for myself, then 10 on Fanagraphics in the 80s. Now it's uh, gone out to the comic book distributors and the book trade, and I'm taking it around to a few shows here. And, and that's uh, pretty nuts, man. I, I love it. It's, it's one of my favorite things you've done. <laughs> and the ACP have got a pull quote on it. Thank you. Yeah, that's but, right. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for that, Tony. <laughs> yeah, our pleasure, man. Yeah. But it's um, it's kind of you were just drawing it as you went along. There was no sort of grand plan. It's yeah. just his character. It was, it was a dog's head. It was yeah. very imp- improvisational, you know. When I was a, I was a young man and. Uh, I was interested in sort of like the idea of automatic writing, you know, contacting the, contacting the, the spirits, uh, you know, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know if I'm putting this right, but yeah, it was, it was totally improvised. I did bits of writing for it if, if it flowed, but um, I like to make it up as I go along. Uh, I even read uh, an interview with Crum around the time. He said he doesn't want to know too far ahead what's going to happen because he doesn't want to get bored. And also, uh, I don't know, all, all during the, uh, all during the 80s, uh, louder acid seemed to always figure out where I lived and followed me around. So that helped me with the improvisations. Wow, okay. Yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> that, and the other one, I've got, I've got a t-shirt of that image, I think. Yeah, yeah. on Off Red Bubble. Is that that's what's Yeah, that's, that's a variation on the theme. That's the cover. Uh, that was the first sketch, a preliminary sketch for the cover of uh, Death Plays a Mean Harmonica. Yes. It's like, you know, kind of a sugar skull to take off on a Mexican Day of the Dead, Day of the Dead imagery. And, yeah, that that's the cover of Death Plays a Mean Harmonica. It's sort of like my 150-page uh, graphic novel, kind of my fictionalized report on living in Oaxaca for 10 years and uh, kind of being drafted into being in bands with both expats and Mexicanos. And, uh, you know, and also uh, I moved there when I was 50, and I was, like, kind of contemplating mortality from the point of view of a a 50 year old to 55 and what better place to contemplate your morality than uh, Mexico where there's a full acceptance and a sense of humor as well as fatalism about life and death and uh, they kind of got it right you know they, they, they don't they don't hold it away at arm's length they look straight at it that's the thing there isn't it man yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 land of peyote, peyote and is that yeah uh, well that's um you know the, i guess in the in the north with uh uh in sonora area sonora state um there's uh the huichol people have their long-standing cult of peyote use uh down down in oaxaca you have uh, a couple of different towns watla de jimenez where maria sabina the shamanist was and then you have uh san jose del pacifico and uh, yeah, you can. I mean, they've been uh, using mushrooms ceremonially there for 3,000 years. So you could go. I would like. I went like when I knew my dad was like in his final illness. I went to uh, San Jose del Pacifico, and uh, I don't know. You know, just ate a bunch of shrooms and contemplated it, and it really, oh. it really helped me through. Uh, you know, accepting his uh, his imminent demise. It wasn't easy, but you know, yeah. an interesting thing to do. Do, do you use psychedelics in your work as well? Um, you know, uh, I found out when I was a painting major in college and I, uh, through, uh, experimentation, I found out, you know, you can't really make art when you're, when you're tripping, uh, <laughs> because you can't, you know, you, you see that there's this like, you know, matrix of decisions to, you know, you make a decision every three seconds when you're creating art and yeah. you can't do that when you're, when you're, when you're tripping, <laughs> really? okay, but that's interesting. Yeah. you know, you can also, uh, you know, I don't see tripping as recreation so much as like, uh, you know, it's like kind of like you're you're mapping out your psyche and your trajectory and your appreciation of reality and stuff. Uh, so I kind of look at it like that. Wow. Not to say I haven't, you know, been to like dozens of uh, dead shows tripping balls, but you know, that was a whole other thing. Man, I love the dead. We'll talk to the dead one day. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I miss Jerry. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. We can do with him these days. Yeah. Show, show the kids what's really going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you got on the? So you, we we've been at SPX, so it's start of our second day here. What you what you pushing? What you what not pushing? Because we're not hard sellers, are we? Yeah, yeah. But what have you got on the table? And you know. Yeah, you know, um, I'm I'm putting out some art. I've got a lot of small original pieces that go for like 
anywhere from 40 to 100 bucks. And I've got like a portfolio of pages. And, uh, you know, the Dog Boy books out there. And then my most recent books would be uh, Death Plays a Mean Harmonica. Also, uh, I've got two books in the 1956 series, two yeah, graphic Yeah, we talked about that on the show, man. I love those books, yeah. yeah so almost you. like jazz scene, but they're, they're quite progressive as well, aren't they, you know? Yeah, well, you know, like when my dad passed a few years ago, I wanted to honor his, his career. Uh, he was a buyer for a, a series of kind of swanky department stores. Yeah. So him and, his, him and his cohort at the time, they're in their mid to late 20s. Every couple, few months, they go to New York to buy in the wholesale uh, market, you know, all kinds of stuff for the stores. But, you know, they're, they're guys in their 20s in 1955, 56, 57. So they go, they go to the bars uh, in Midtown, 52nd, 53rd, 54th Street, Johnny Ryan's, uh, it's all those clubs there. Yeah. You know, they'd see, they'd see uh, you know, people doing everything from swing to uh, bop, hard bop to cool bop. Cool bop was kind of the thing then. Uh, my dad told me he never saw Miles, but he did see Dizzy Gillespie. And, wow. Okay. You know, yeah, so yeah. I, I, it kind of like looks at the Manhattan after Midnight World of the mid-50s. It's a really atmospheric book. And it's got, it almost has two strands of, you've got the, the, the group of businessmen and there's a businesswoman mixed up in there. And then you've got the, the girls Yeah, the, the girls. Town, yeah, they're kind of like, uh, well, there's a character called uh, uh, Ramon Ramona, who's yeah. kind of like a, a trans or non-binary person who wants to be, they want to make it in the world of fashion or possibly acting and stuff. And then their, their girlfriend is uh, Nikki and she's a writer. And, but they, you know, they're like doing, trying to do creative things. They both find themselves kind of working after midnight yeah. and they hook up with the, like the guys in the fashion industry and, you know, a lot of drama ensues. Yeah, it's great. So man. really yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really good. And quite different as well. Yeah, well, you know, it's just I always I always bring my point of view, which is, uh, you know, it's always a little bent or a little little off. You know, I'm not I never I never try to contrive anything for a market because that's the that's the kiss of um, yeah. of shit. I mean, you can you never know, predict. Yeah, 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 no, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, I I've learned to write a script, and that's important. And you know, write, rewrite, and uh, like uh, my wife Serena and I, we met in the early '90s and. You know, I'd, I'd been improvising my writing for so long, and she was writing short fiction and novels then, and we kind of, we had an ongoing conversation about, about writing, and she helped me a lot get rid of the qualifiers, get rid of all that, like, flowery language, and um, she turned me on to a lot of great writers. Uh, one, of the, one of my faves then was this woman, Dawn Powell, who was writing okay. novels about New York in the 50s and 40s, and her stuff really informed Bug House, the whole world of Manhattan at that yeah. at that time. That's great, man. Yeah. That's really good. And the thing is, if anyone wants it, they're available in the UK. A lot of our listeners are UK based. If they want it, all your books are in on Amazon, print on demand. I think, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. They're on, everything's on Amazon, and uh, you can get it print on demand. You just have to you, you put in my name, you know, Steve Laffler, and uh, you know, if you put in, you can put in Bug House or Dog Boy and, or 1956, and they'll, they'll come up. And, yeah, and they uh, get delivered really quickly on that in demand. You get them like the following day sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and another way is, um, well, anyway, so yeah, and you can get them from Amazon. Uh, the, the printer, the print on demand printer and distributor I use, which is Ingram, uh, they also, they, they can print in Europe. So stores in Europe can also, okay. they can just go to Ingram. Or look up, look up Steve Laffler or Cathead Comics, and they're going to find them. Get on it, get yeah, that, it, I yeah. mean, like Lambeek, for example. Uh, that, that's right. that's where they get them. They get them from England. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, before we finish, I'm going to ask you for your socials, and then I'm going to drop two questions on you <laughs> that I want you, I want you to just answer instinctively. So, firstly, where can people find you online, Steve? Oh, where can uh, uh, SteveLaffler.com, and uh, Laffler is a slightly odd name. It's L-A-F, as in Frank, L-E-R. And I always say it's only one F because people automatically write two for yeah, some yeah. reason. And uh, yes, I am a socialist. <laughs> <laughs> one, one F in your name, two Fs in your comic. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, 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 yeah. So, right, here's a question. I'm going to ask you two questions, just an instinctive answer all from right, you. All right, right. Who's the great, you can't say yourself, who's the greatest comic artist? Jeez. <laughs> who's come to your mind straight away? Uh, it's a toss-up between uh, Jack Kirby and Robert Crumb, you know. Okay, good you know, just I'm just talking about what I what knocked me on my ass growing up. Cool. Yeah. Um, who's the greatest comic character? Oh man, yeah, off the top of my head. Instinctual, not don't search for it. Just uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> That's because when I was, I mean, when I was ten years old. 
you know, you'd, you'd be sitting there in church and bored, bored to shit. And I'd look up in the rafters <laughs> in this big old Gothic church. And I, I literally felt like I, I just wanted to like shoot a web up there and swing around in the rafters. So, yeah, you fine. know, uh, Spider-Man affected me in a, in a way when I was like probably nine, 10, 11, 12, that, you know, it, 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 I was always drawing, but that's what, that's the character that just pulled me into comics and really made me want to make comics. You know? But I'd also, I'll just throw out the name Max Fleischer because from the time yeah. I was a tiny kid, I saw those old animations on TV and basically you had, um, you had swing jazz, bopping bugs, rapping, doing talking blues over a jazz soundtrack. Bam. So I saw that when I was three, four, five on old video. reruns and man, that's, that's the shit right there. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. Absolutely, it's been an absolute pleasure this weekend. We've it's had been a great to hang out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with the English crowd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I got to get over uh, on your side of the pond. You, you know? are, man. Yeah, so yeah Anglem, you'd fucking love it. I tell you now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right. Cool. There you have it. That was a little bit extra you weren't expecting this week. There you go, yeah, folks. Good stuff. So. Um, what a nice dude. Yeah. Yeah. He, I have to laugh because we went for a meal and. Um, I'd ordered a ginger ale, and I think he accidentally got my drink, and he's gone, what is this? <laughs> what the fuck is this? So sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm meant to be, uh, up, I'm meant to be out you know, being a boozy English geezer, and uh, I had a ginger ale. Yeah, but there yeah. you go. It was good. Funny. Gangster living. Uh, uh, speaking of which... Ginger ale can be nice and refreshing, I've got to say. No, yeah, I love ginger no, beer and ginger ale. I'm a fan yeah. of it. A bit of ginger Especially, in your diet does you well, doesn't it? Yeah. You've got a bit of a stomach upset. You can take a ginger yeah. ale. Oh, I, lo- I, I love those. Uh, is it Brandenburg? Ginger beers? Oh, are they the alcoholic uh, ones? No, 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 no. You're thinking of crabbies. That's uh, it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. Well, Speak- <laughs> Do we have Speak- any sh- speaking of crabbies? Yeah. yeah. Do we have any sh- shout-outs? Shout no, I've got a couple. So um, <clears throat> we're about to launch another graphic gospel, um, which is for anyone who missed the first one. We've got two on the way actually. One that's um, I think going to go live in the next couple of weeks. They're like the tribute version of a tier one Bible. Um, ah, so bro. watch out for that. That'll be coming. They're very Look cheap. They're that. just sort of little leafly kind of comic books. Um, watch out for that one. Uh, now that's what I call turning tricks. Um, I think it's a pin-up special yeah. by our oh. buddy from the Slack, Mike Aston. Is, I'll is give this a shout myself. Oh, we okay. Yeah, it looks saucy. Uh, it's yeah. made its money, but you, you, you can't do bad. Get a copy of that. I've backed it as well. I don't even um, for these books, but I'm going to back this one. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, guys, say my one. Filth wizards. Dan, have you got any? Yes. Miranda and the Golden Horns. Long away for a lot to the <laughs> Miranda and the Golden Horns. Long away for a lot to the fantasy <laughs> about demonic possession, apocalyptic omens, and the friends made along the way. Uh, that needs a little bit of help. We've got three days to go, so by the time you listen to this, you've got about two days to go. Uh, okay. By Grim Wilkins. That looks lovely. It's really, really nice. That does, and we've got uh, long-term friends of the show, uh, the Reckless Heroes, Masters oh, yeah. Volume One, Survive, Win, Unleash the Master Within, uh, and that's blazing towards its goal. If you like uh, knights versus pirates, pirates, yeah, uh, the Last Cowboy, etc. A lot of that stuff is on uh, Comic House. You can go check it out. Chris Imber's artwork is absolutely joy to behold, and he's just getting better and better all the time. Yeah, uh, go check out Masters. Cool. Nice. Six star now. Oh, that's, <laughs> what I said that, that. That was a, that was very dramatic. <laughs> What's happened to him today? <laughs> I don't. I don't uh-huh. know. <laughs> it's something's either worn off or kicked in. Um, <laughs> so, uh, speaking of comics, even more comics, we've got a few to recommend to you, lovely people, to check out over the uh, uh, next coming days or weeks or whenever you listen to this show. So, um, I've got two, Tony's got two, Dan's got one. Yeah. So, Dan, you're going to sit snugly in the middle yes. uh, of this lovely sandwich. That's, that's... <laughs> I'll be the sausage in between two big paps. <laughs> uh, I didn't put my hand between two pillows. <laughs> <laughs> planes, tra- <laughs> planes, trains and automobiles. <laughs> Fucking amazing yeah. film. Um... <laughs> that bit when they go between the two... Trucks, uh, yeah, and he, he looks over, over and John, there's a spark. John Candy looks like fucking the <laughs> devil. Yeah, the devil. <laughs> so as if you come in the car with me, <laughs> Steve Martin's fingers have been embedded in, <laughs> into the dashboard. Oh, I mean, it's no first wives club, but it's pretty good. Yeah, what yeah. could be exactly anyway? Uh, <laughs> 
Who's going to kick us off? Tony, do you want to kick us off? Okay, so I go first. So my first one is Spread Love. Yes, that's what I said. Uh, <laughs> not su- it says on the cover, not suitable for children or your mother, which I kind of like. Huh. This is issue 13. It's $12 from Atomic Books, who were our um, table mates at hey. SPX, the nicest people. They Plus, the, um, they bought a load of snacks, which they were sharing with us. Uh. So I was you know, eating crisps and stuff and sitting there chatting to them and yeah, right. Lovely people, lovely, lovely people. So it's twelve dollars. Um, thick A4 stock paper, mostly black and white interiors. Um, the inside back cover and the inside front cover, cover of color as well as the cover. Um, now combine these two facts. It's called Spread Love Comics, and I bought it. So I'm sure you can imagine what the interiors are going to be like on this. Um, terribly sore, like the most. I mean. This was. Is, is it you know, filth, Tony? Just say absolute it. and utter filth. But I was going to say you can judge. So I bought it. It was in a it was in a bag, you know, like a self sealing uh, magazine bag. Um, so I put it in my suitcase and travelled back. And then a couple of days after I got back from holiday, I was going through my little pile of comics that I had, and I opened this and I thought, "Thank fuck, I didn't get a pull from customs." <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like one of those. Um, outstanding cover by Adam Brown. Um, it's it's got that real sort of rip off press homaging ec vibes you know it's got the central image with the three circular images down the side uh, yes spread love comics probably featuring freaks sex pests and weirdos and then but the main image is a dude who's got sort of two heads um and he's walking across like a city street and he's trying his best to avoid in the street um um toxic waste an eyeball a syringe a dog turd you know, it's got there's there's a crumb esque kind of feel to it. It's a little bit like that, but much more extreme, veiny, um, twisted uh, stuff going on. Um, it's it's absolutely um, full of talent, man, new and old in this. Um, Peter Bags in it. He's got a page in it. Um, Mike Diana. Do you guys know the history of Mike Diana? No, no. Nope. That's a a dirty trial <laughs> about what he drew. There's a there's a. Uh, a man who um, may divide the whole of the comics world, but uh, he's in it. Hunt Emerson's in it as well. I love Hunt Emerson. You know, Hunt's a great, we're chatting about um, him on the Drink and Draw on Friday. Hunt's, you know, a hero of British comics. And um, I was trying to remember the, um, the the girly mag that he had a comic strip in. Um, a member of the Slack, who I can't possibly say it was Simon, uh, reminded me that it was Fiesta magazine. Um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Cam Hayden's in it, Josh Simmons. So I just thought I'd mention a couple of my favourite stories in it. Yeah, there's sort of 10, 15 stories in it. But my favourite one, one of my favourites was um, Dr. Handjob, MD, by um, Eric Calfee. Uh, Dr. Glenn Handjob, MD, is a goddamn he- healthcare hero. Um, I'm going to leave it to your imagination at the start of this discussion as to how he helps people as a doctor, how he might solve their, their you know, cure their ills. Um, he's um, he's contacted by a lady called Mrs. Yvette Cousin Humper. Um, who needs her husband? His husband's in a coma, and he, she needs to get him out of it. Uh, apparently, he was um, he when he drinks red wine. Um, this man gets particularly sexually turned on and tried to have sex with a donkey, but got kicked in the head, and it put him in a, a coma. We've all been there. Um, so, I'll, so let's ask you, Dan. What do you think Doctor Handjob MD does that helps him get out of the coma? Uh, God, if only there was some clue in the name. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. So um, <laughs> he wanks him off, um, and uh, Spider Man's another person who walks in the room, um, and it turns out that I don't think we're spoiling the story um, that Doctor Handjob is actually not a real MD, and he's doing it for his TikTok account. <laughs> uh, and then the man wakes up, and the last panel is of him sitting there waking up in bed and going, "I have no idea what just happened, but being in a hospital is awesome." So is that that's quite a cool one. That's probably my favourite strip in the book. Um, <laughs> I mean that's straight out of a tribute book, and you know that's, you could see yeah, that in yeah, yeah, totally. basement, so. um, Slumpy is two pages by Peter Elick. I'm having trouble saying things today. Elickco. Um, Slumpy is a hobo, heroin addict, I think, who is um, slumped in an alleyway by a trash can. It's very dirty, drawn, you know, scratchy, drawn underground feel to it. Um, and another junkie comes in, steals his shoes, and then a couple come in and they have sex uh, on the top of the trash can. Um, um, in front of Slumpy, and he then the man finishes, and again there's another spider manning incident. He Spider Man's Slumpy in the corner. Slumpy suddenly wakes up and says, "God damn, that was some good shit." 
and he runs off. That's the whole strip. Um, another one, I'm going to be careful at how I say this, not to upset Vince. The Amazing Adventures of Three Shameless See You Next Tuesdays. Didn't say that again. <laughs> um, and this is by the cover artist, Adam Brown, who I was just talking about. And it's about three three guys. They find a homeless man. And for their TikTok hits, there seems to be a um, a satire on social media going on in this, which is natural anyway. It obsesses a lot of people, isn't it? Um, it's worth taking a piss out of. They give a homeless man some money. And then when they turn off the phone and stop filming, they curb stomp this homeless bloke. And then the three blokes go home and then um, so all independently suck it, suck themselves off. Um, oh, we've God. all done that. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, God, Vinpy. God. Yeah. Um, spread love. There's a lot of these. I wish I'd gotten them before. Yeah, I don't really see them in shops over here. I suppose it must be a difficult thing to import, I'm guessing. Um but interestingly, Falpy's in the next issue. Oh, so okay. the, one, the one that's being advertised at the moment, Falpy's in that one. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. But um, top draw, man, like proper last gasp, kitchen sink, underground feel to them. Absolutely top draw. Really, I think it may be my favourite anthology for a long time from a point of view of a hit rate, you know? Not everything's wow. perfect in it, but the back, the inside back cover by Hunt Emerson is worth cutting out and framing. It's that good. It's like a print. Wow. Yeah, but yeah, really good. Spread love. Um, if you um, look up Atomic Books, you can be able to, if you're in the States, you'll be able to get some issues from there. I'm not sure where you would get one over here. It might be something that I maybe speak to um, Third Bear Press about, but I'm not sure whether you might get in trouble importing them. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's my first one, guys. There you go. Nice. Uh, my first one is uh, is an IDW book, issue one. Uh, right is this on- part of your issue one thing you're doing? You know, you're going to do like read an issue one, weren't you? Yeah, for yeah. And, yeah. I like that um, idea. And uh, it was another thumbs up. This one, um, cool. Kilmore is. Um, have you heard of this one? Yes, I've not read it though. Uh, writer, co-creator Scott Brian Wilson, artist, co-creator Max Allen Fuchs, colorist, spot illustration Valentina Brisky, letterer CPD Athletic League. It's quite, <laughs> an, uh, quite an interesting name for. Um, the letterer but uh basically what this story is is um it's a serial killer story right there's a surprise in comics these days a book, book about serial killers <laughs> um but the synopsis is the city of colonia is suffering from total economic collapse but worse than the unemployment and urban decay is the skyrocketing skyrocketing homicide rate most of the few cops left on the force think it's just another symptom of the city's decline but one detective has a darker theory that the most depraved killers in the country have all moved here to take advantage of the chaos um there's more to um the synopsis but i think that's all you need to that's all you really need to know uh about this this book and it's certainly that was, it was that bit that made me think oh uh front cover of this um i would say it's a kindly old lady but she's clearly a uh elderly demon from hell uh, on the cover and uh, she is the first character you see within this book um and colonia which isn't a real place but obviously um Oh well, they may there probably is a place in the world called Colonia, isn't there? Yeah. But it's an interesting sort of uh setup and synopsis. It's a it's almost got that classic science fiction sort of tale of of creating a city so then you can put a certain like this economic sort of downturn. The city's pretty much it's almost like a it's almost post apocalyptic because a lot of people have left or it's it's awful. Um in, in fact, like the the first page there's just a guy crossing a road and uh, then a car comes out of nowhere and brutally knocks him over. Uh, and, and this little old lady gets out and she's like, oh no, are you okay? Oh dear, oh. And this person clearly mashed up and dead. They're like, I'll go get help. Oh dear, I'll find a nice policeman. She gets in the car and it just says on the bottom of the page, Ethel, because she's got in the car and she's smiling. So she's the first serial killer you meet <laughs> in, in the book. Um and then what it does, um, I thought about this um, after reading the book because I, I just I breezed through this book. I really enjoyed it. It's a, mm. it's an interesting setup um, that could go very dark, um, but could do some interesting things because certainly it, it's got horror vibes. It's a horror thriller vibe, and um, you know how, for instance, um, oh, what was the the horror book that we like about um, the serial killer on the camp? 
the, the series. Oh, um, oh God, I always oh, forget the name. I love that yeah. series. Um, but the, it's almost and that and with obviously like the likes of plastic and vinyl and things, there is a real. There's an upturn in in sort of slashes and serial killers becoming, but also with a bit of a weird turn to them, you know. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And this is a book that it is very much treating it like, you know, when you hear all these serial killers coming to this place, it's mm. not. They're not all sort of like you know normal people, and you you sort of meet them as it goes on. I say meet them. You only see them briefly, and and like whenever they're introduced to one, there's a name. But there's a certain over the top. Na- there's a comic book nature, the, the heightened reality, which I think a book like this benefits from, because yeah. if you if you did it seriously and made it like super dark and grim, it, it probably wouldn't be an enjoyable read. Uh, okay. Whereas whereas this one's got more. It's got an energy to it. And from the first page, you're um, you have a double page spread of a cityscape with the with the name of the book over the top of it, um, which looks cool. But then it made me think about um, how those sort of pages are used in comic books. And is that it's a love, it's a beautiful bit of art. Um, and obviously the titles look cool, but is that two pages that could have been used on story or is it something that when they're creating this, they're thinking of the eventual eventual trade? Cause I don't see they're going to do that on every issue. It was, that was a more of a, a comics constructive, you know, like, you know, how is this being made? Is this being made with a viewpoint of the book at the end rather than the individual issue? Um, which is an interesting uh, way to sort of go. I'll, I'll send you guys the page of, you know, the double page spread because the first one's called Scum. And it says Scum Part 1, so I don't know if um, okay. this is going to be ongoing. But you then meet uh, a guy called the Giraffe <laughs> who has who's, uh, just seems like a normal guy. I mean, he looks pretty weird and he's being interrogated by the police and you find out a bit more about like the killings he's done and how he he literally came to this city to take advantage of like you know the, these people that just didn't leave town people that on the downturn and he just wanted to kill lots of people it's very, it gets very dark um but then later on as the detectives are finding out like one of them has a list of missing people which is huge um but the city's so the, the back end has fallen out of it so much that there's not even IT departments within the police department or anything. You know, he he right. he literally had to print off a list himself, and he's been marking them off physically with a pencil once he's found out where these people are because of the knock-on effect of his partner that starts the issue says to him, "Oh, by the way, this is my last day. I'm leaving. I can't do it. I can't do this anymore." Um, and he meets yeah. another character who's going to become his partner. And it's it's almost the first issue is the setup of the world. Um, there's some beautiful shots of like how run down and you know just the, the awful this city is. It almost feels like dystopian. You know, we had a, a, an episode about yes. dystopia, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. there is that kind of feel to it. But amongst that, there are still places that are still existing. Like there's a diner that's you know that seems to be acting normal. There's a character that. As soon as I saw her, um, I thought she was a vigilante at some point. Um, and she feels like a, a creation of Dan Butcher. Um, <laughs> because um, you see this woman like built like a brick wall. And she's, just, she's literally just beating the shit out of a guy. She goes into a, a sort of cafe. Orders like... I mean, she, she orders like, a, a, like three different meals for herself. And uh, she gets on quite nicely with the, you know, the guy that's working there. And she sh- shakes his hand, and you can see the bruises on her knuckles. And uh, but then when she gets up to leave the table, you see her name is Lady Face Smasher. <laughs> and I was like, okay, there's a, you know, she's she's someone that's just there to literally kick the shit out of people. So she's another <laughs> one, that, neither one, another one of the characters. There's a there's a guy called the Sufferer. There's a serial killer called the Sufferer who seems to be killing people and then feeling bad about it. it they, there's some they're introducing these little characters as it goes on i don't know how i i really enjoy it you know well, I was, is this an ongoing or a mini or i think it's a mini i mean it's idw so i'd imagine it's um it's lucky to survive man they got rid of most of their books sadly yeah, didn't they? yeah really? okay. this one has just come out this week as well so this is a, this all is right a watch one. out for that one yeah yeah um but certainly um it's an interesting concept 
Um, it rattles along at a decent pace. I, I was really interested. The art is... Um, you can tell that the artist is both influenced by the likes of... And the name has just left me. Who did um, work with Grant Morrison on Superman? Did the authority? Frank Wiley. Uh, Frank Wiley. Yeah, yeah, Frank yeah, Wiley. yeah. yeah there's, I can see lots of different influences, but it's a style that works really nicely for this. And nice clean lines, um, lots of shadow. It's... It's, I hope it gets a few more uh, issues in because um, I, I'm interested to see where a story like this goes because it's got such a, a high concept. You know, it's right there. You know, this sit, a lot of people have left this city. It's got all the ingredients. A lot of people have... You've got a run-down dystopian city. A lot of people have left it. The people that are still remaining are now in trouble because serial killers have moved to the city just to have some fun that's it on a on you know that's a real it could be it could be grindhouse it could be action packed it could be all kinds so i'm i'm intrigued to see how the story plays out because it could go either way couldn't it it could go yeah. you know could it be these cops team up and then start taking out these serial killers or are the serial killers going to win yeah. it's i've once reading this book i actually had a thought of a topic i'll i'll, I'll talk to the to you gents off air just to discuss okay a, a potential show that could be a, um a, Ooh, okay. a, around stuff like this okay um but as an issue one it 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 rattles along there's plenty of it despite the two pa- the two pages of a, a cityscape you know a, a double splash page they waste no other real you know no space is wasted it, you by the end of it you you realize that a lot of shit's going to kick off um so kill more um in another one of my issue ones let's just try something Good. out it's another it's another thumbs up i was uh, another one coming oh, nice in. One. yeah and i haven't um i haven't i haven't seen these cat these critters before either uh scott brian wilson apparently worked on a true cult have you heard of that one i, I don't know why the true mm. and the the two u's in true cult were both v's um that annoys me <laughs> that rings a bell <laughs> um <laughs> Listeners, of course, if any of you have checked out these books, annoyed by that. And uh, the artist mm-hmm. worked on uh, Halcyon Days and the an Altered Carbon uh, adaptation. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. Uh, so, a, friend, a friend, a friend of mine at work was working late, and he his his desk is back by the window, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, he was the, the, he was working late, and he had um, on one screen he had the TV series Altered Carbon up. You know, <clears throat> and it gets quite saucy that doesn't it? That yes. series, yeah. and uh, the, the security guard came around just as it hit a saucy bit, uh-huh. and it, in the reflection in the window, he thought that my mate was watching porn, and my mate has to go, no, 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 it's Netflix, it's a sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> classic, classic. It's always the so way. still to this day. Obviously, I always say, Dave, you still watching porn at work, mate? Yeah. Still constantly. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Big shout um, to Dave. Yeah. So, kill more number one, and that is two separate words. Kill more because the serial killers are there to do exactly that. So kill that's my, that's my one. Yeah. Dan, what's yours? I'm going to talk about local man. Hey, oh, I've cool. only read a few, yeah, yeah, yeah. two issues of this, and I caught up today and read uh, read up till five. Uh, have you read is... gold yet? Or no, I've got no, it. I bought okay. it. I haven't got it. I haven't read it yet. Uh, right. It's kind of. I was trying to work out: is that in the story, or is yep. it just a kind of? It isn't part, yeah, of, part, okay. part of continuity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, this is such a great. Uh, I read the synopsis. Uh, once Jack Zav- Xavier, uh, star recruit, the media sensation, third super team, third gen, had it all. When controversy sends Cross Jack crawling back to his mum and dad's basement in the mid- Midwest, Jack struggles to find fit into a world he left far behind, and then the bodies start piling up. So this guy, uh, the main character Jack, he used to be a superhero called Cross Jack. Do you, and, do you want to give the credits for this man, and I can tell yeah, my sorry. funny story? It's yeah. uh, written by Tim Seeley and Tony Fleeks, and the art is by the two of them as well. Yeah. So interestingly, um, just quickly to interrupt you, D Man, is um, I had a photograph with me, me uh, Strotty and Cliff in a diner, a coffee shop, just before we went into Baltimore, and then we got photobombed by some bloke looking in the window, um, and we all thought, "Oh, look, we're being photobombed," and. Like a week later, I realised it was Tony Felice. <laughs> Brilliant. So the creator of this Great. book was that bloke who was looking yeah. in the window going, what are those fucking three Who weird goes? blokes doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the main character used to be a superhero called Crossjack, 
who was in like an image team of superheroes. We've talked about this book before. Uh, yeah. It's a real banger. And essentially, like in these next two issues, there's kind of more drama going on. Uh, he's getting deeper and deeper into like these murders that are happening around him. And everything you kind of think is what it seems isn't. It's really well done. There's a real switch at the end of five. I was like, fucking hell, I didn't see that coming. It's yeah. I, I was absolutely gripped to it all the way through. This is just a monthly banger that is yes. like big game and a couple of other books at the moment, like I did with um Usagi and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Every month is just it's at the top of the pile to read. It's for me. Re- real fun. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because they allude to stuff in the issue like, oh, that happened in the past. Why do you do X? And then on the reverse of the issue, you get like the nineties comic where it's like four or five pages long, like a backstory that tells you it goes over that incident that they're referent, re- referring to. Uh, and it's done like in the nighty style with a, a cover homage in like uh, popular covers at a time. Yeah. If you're, you can jump on it. If you're not a fan of that time period, if you're a fan of that time period, it's like even more special for me, at least I, I, I was like, I'm fucking loving this. But it's just a good story about that dude. Yes. You know, that's just a sort yeah. of another layer to it for me, I think. Yeah. Cause he gets sent back in and they're like, you can't use any of your superpowers. You can't throw anything. You His mum hates him. Yet. He's got an ex-girlfriend who's married to the sheriff. And yeah, there's all this the sort whole of town on, pretty much fucking hates him. He's like, comes yeah. back and he's just uh, kind of fucked it all up. And no one's really got any sympathy for him whatsoever. So, but he tries to do the, the right thing. And as a hero and as a character, I found myself with him from the get-go. Yeah, he's, he's likable, isn't he? He's very likable. He reminds me he's very much like Hawkeye to me. Yes. You know, he's got that sort of angry, fucked up, not the most not the biggest power set, but quite skilled. You know, occasionally you see that that jump to the top, don't you? But crap with relationships, that sort of kind of character. He's got, yeah. got like the, the, the bullseye skill, hasn't he? Like wherever he can yeah. throw or shoot <clears> or wherever <throat> he can hit, which is pretty powerful. But when you've got other people on the team who can like time travel and shoot lasers and stuff. It is a bit lacking. I don't want to go into too much of the story because there's some of the stuff reading. I thought, okay, it's like that. And then there's a real kind of a couple of moments you're like, oh, fuck, I didn't expect that at all. And it recontextualizes and reframes stuff you've already been told. Yeah. I I, I honestly can't recommend reading this enough. This is one of those books I kind of let slip and I should have been on it per it as the issues came out. Mate, you're going to love, you're going to love the next issue. Yeah, nice. you need to read. Yeah, gold is in continuity, so I suspect it. If they can, it's a it's mad because it's basically visually the cover, an homage to the Deathmatch, um, Valiant Definitely. image, Deathmatch, sorry, yeah. uh, Valiant image uh, crossover that was just utterly fucked up by both companies back yeah. in the day, you know. Um, but in it, there's loads of characters from other image properties, um, right. some from years ago. I mean, battle popes in it for fuck's sake, <laughs> you know. Well, they've obviously just pulled in favors, and you 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 need to read it to see it. But a team travels back, travels to the future, and something happens, and yeah, it goes off from there. But it's it's really worth. It. I don't know how they pulled it together. There was obviously a lot of phone calls going on around that one. Um, right. But yeah, really good. Can we do this? And yeah, yeah. why not? Uh, also, I know we're we're going to talk about this probably next week, but fucking big game this yeah. this Wednesday. We're very excited, aren't we? Yeah. Got, got to get on that. I mean, I, I just want to um, put a little shout out for that. Actually, um, purely in the in the sense that, like, it's an event comic that we're genuinely really, yeah. really excited for. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm going to be on that Monday mo- uh, Wednesday morning. And yeah. whether whether you, whether you out there like it or not, and you feel free to like whatever you like, and you know, just don't be a dick. Um, but this is just caught all of us um, as just. You know, BS. He's bringing uh, back that Wednesday excitement, that yeah, totally. new comic book day yeah. excitement for us. Yeah, yeah. Which, um, you know, this is this is the first. I mean, I I love a lot of comic series, but this is the first time in a while where that sort of Wednesday. Oh, I've been aware of what what date that's coming out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So interesting, interesting times. Uh, you know, and I hope that w- wherever you're listening. There are creators and books out there that you know exactly when the next book's coming out or when their trade's coming out or anything like that. Because it's just awesome when you feel like that about comics. Let's be honest. Yeah. That's why we're here. But um 
Yeah, top stuff, Dan. I need to get on local mail. Yeah, I totally. V, you're going to lo- love. Yeah, I know you've yeah. read some of it, but get back yeah. on it. It's brilliant. Yeah, Boyd Rovers is another one, isn't it? That we enjoy as it comes. Yeah, out. oh There's yeah, a few yeah. on there that I'm yeah. behind in that. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many comics, not enough time, isn't there? Really, not um, enough money, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you yeah. do something stupid like you decide to read loads of issue ones. Instead of... <laughs> yeah, um, you and I got carried away on fucking comicsology earlier today as well. So yeah, yeah, we did. Um, well, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll explain it a little bit why. In a bit, but Tony, do you want to do yours? Yeah, so my second one is actually two issues, but it's Punchline and the Vaudevillian, the Vaude Villains, um, out of Hero Tomorrow Comics. Story, layouts, colors, and letters by the hardest working man in indie comics, Ted Sikora, who we've we did a short interview at Heroes last year. Do you remember I did a 10 minute with him mm. on the con floor? And I've reviewed Bloom, especially, was a favorite of mine. Layouts, pencil, and inks by all right, hold, hold your fucking cups of coffee, Donnie Haddy with Haddy with Jar Jar. Addy with Jar Jar. Yep. Uh, variant covered by David. Well done. Thank you. It felt, like you. it felt like you needed that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, variant covered by David. I don't have a drink before we do the show. David Abrevia. Um, I picked this up from Ted at Baltimore. Um, I'm a big fan of his comics. They, they have a genuine um, Bronze Age, almost Gerber esque vibe to it, which I mentioned to Ted. I said, oh, I was chatting to a couple of buddies, and we kind of feel there's a bit of the Gerber in your writing. And he was so pleased. <laughs> See the smile on his face. Yeah, and I do. I, I hold to that. So this, in a bit, in in a similar way to Big Game, there's parallels to be made with this. This brings together a number of the properties that are across the, <laughs> pardon me, sorry, That's Hero it. Tomorrow um, comics universe. So a couple of a number of the characters that appear in this punchline is a kind of a cross between a um, heavyweight boxer, a scary clown, a super soldier, and a street vigilante who uses. Um, knuckle dusters uh, a palmer is um it's kind of there's, there's a palmer is kind of their spider-man so you know spider-man is a human combined with a spider yeah. this character is a bloke who, who runs a um ice cream van um combined with this this made-up animal called an a palmer um and he has strength agility and he can communicate with animals and he drives around in an ice cream van which is kind of cool he's actually had quite a long running series i think he's one of their first series and that's you can you can find all these in comicsology incidentally and tap dance killer which is she's kind of part of this group called the vaude villains who are kind of part villains part vigilantes quite revengers um and there's all these different weird characters as part of that um issue one follows that tried and tested formula of fleshing out the players and their motivations and intertwining their their particular storylines uh, and then set and then as we get in all good marvel comics don't you sets it up for a confrontation at the end between two of the characters now the fight between um between punchline of which i own a t-shirt and a palmer happens in issue two and is really well handled and as is typical with all those marvel you know the thing versus the hulk or you know spider-man versus the angel or something like that doesn't end completely where you can say one person is the victor. Do you know what I mean? You used to see that, didn't we? There's always a little twist at the end where something happens, but it's really well handled. Um, Ted, in the first issue especially, Ted really does weave in a lot of um, story and motivation into the issue. So you, 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 it, 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 there's a big cast, which he introduces, he gives motivations, he gives personality, and then he pursues the storyline, which isn't an easy thing to do in a short single issue. Um, but he get also gets all their power sets out without making it too expositional, which I think is an art form. I think once you, you know what you're doing when you can weave storyline with, exp, in a way, exposition. Um, he sets up this conflict, like I've said, and there's there's some good action in it. You got to do that. You can't have a comic that's just talking heads in this mm. sort of universe. So it, it, there is a there's a, there's some punching and some action and some. This is where maybe the the Gerber comes in because it's not just a superhero universe. There's a weirdness to it as well, in the same way that you used to get in Gerber's Defenders, for example, something like that, Amiga the Unknown, or even even Howard the Duck stuff. You know, there's a, there's a strange reality to it. It's, it's slightly askew compared to what you would you the real world is like, um, and you can't always predict who is the hero and who's the sort of in the grey somewhere type character it, and it, it, but that makes it all the more enthralling to me it makes it more interesting and you you want to follow and you you don't i don't necessarily have a favorite character in it I, I think i like them all you know um there's um i got the i got the collector's edition of this i'm not sure if that's the regular um which i got ted to sign but in the back there's loads of extra material in there that's uh um 
a lot of the way they do re- use reference to um, communicate with the artist. So Ted very much works hand in hand with the art as a writer and, you know, a layout artist um, to such a point where he'll even pose as the character. So they, so he can communicate the, the way someone's sitting down or the way, way someone's sort of head in their hands looking sad or the way someone's transfixed sitting at a bar watching a big fight kick off sort of thing. It's, it's, but it's not just done as extra material and informational in relation to um, the back matter. It's also done with a big smile on his face. You can see there's a couple of panels. I'll send you an, actually a couple of panels where he's, um, he's just sitting a gog looking at what's going on. It, it's funny, man. It is funny the way he does it. Um, very readable. Um, the art is strong. Um, I mean, this would be quality for a Marvel book. I think um, it's that you know. Sometimes we get we give people a buy, don't we? When they're in the indie small press, we think, well, it's only small press. But this mm. would be strong at wherever it was put, and I think that's what we should see comics as. We shouldn't give them a you know give them a chance because they're small press. You know, everything is on the same playing field these days because they they all sit on the same shelf in a shop, don't they? Um, but this this is quality and and really up there. Um, and it's very easy to pick out each character to work out who per, who each person is. The 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 costume and character design is very strong in this, and there's a bit in the back about that as well. You can find Ted on Twitter at Ted Sikora, which is S I K O R A, on YouTube Hero Tomorrow, Instagram Hero Tomorrow, and you can sign up to Ted's mailer. I'm signed up, and he's always sending stuff through. He does he he has his business model on Kickstarter, um, I think mostly, which is a good way to do it, um, but. You can also go on to Comixology and find a Palmer and Bloom and Tap Dance Killer and, and and all the other stuff as well. So if you fancy it, go and have a look. Not always easy for us to get it in the UK, but I I tend to back his stuff digitally on Kickstarter and then when I see him, I'll pick up the issues that I like. You know, he did a big deal. I think Cliff picked it up, which he had a couple of books that like we say damaged, but they're not. One of them, a couple of them where he'd accidentally signed the cover twice or something, and that went into the pile of books that he got away and he, he and i think cliff for 40 dollars bought a couple of hardbacks and a load of issues it was a really good load. had i had the space in my bag i would have bought the other pile of comics like that you know mm. um but yeah punchline and the vord villains but have a look for anything from hero tomorrow comics because it's, it's all good quality really good stuff and a nice alternative to marvel and dc if you're a bit sick of their comics at the moment go and have a look at this sort of thing there you go that's my second one guys. Oh, that's nice and my second one is issue one of a series that when i picked it up I absolutely just motored through the first issue and eventually... So we were talking about it, weren't we, online? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I just ended up buying a couple of... um, a a few more issues, and I'm working my way through them as well. But, as you know, I'm talking about issue ones. And I I decided to talk about the latest series by the one and only Terry Moore. This is Parker Girls, number one. Now... Those who may know uh, Terry Moore's work, obviously, indie legend, the creator of The Strangers in Paradise, which is, to be honest, like one of the major sort of, especially US independent comic creating sort of titles, isn't it? Um, this is a spin off of the Darcy Parker story arc in Strangers in Paradise. Yeah. Now, I went into the series not knowing that because I myself, I've, I, I'm a big fan of Rachel Rising and I've read some of Terry's other work but Strange in Paradise is one of those gaps in my reading that I need I you know that I need to catch up on more so when I initially went into this I went in cold do you know what I mean I was like oh you know this the story seemed interesting and the synopsis is when the lifeless body of Piper May washes up on Venice Beach the Parker girls suspect the young actress is the victim of foul play and decide to take a closer look at Piper's billionaire husband Zachary May meanwhile an embezzler in the Caribbean confides his darkest secret to a beautiful stranger um, and I was thinking like, okay let's see because um, obviously Terry's done lots of different types of work like, you know from horror to sci-fi and always got that different kind of vibe to it um, and this felt like a sort of pulpy mystery. And as soon as I started reading it, because uh, Tony, I know you've read this this one as well. Yeah, I read it today, man. We were reading it at the same time. Yeah, and I was yeah. just hooked. Do you know I've what got I mean? to get on this. Got to I, get on this. I was thinking like very well constructed first issue. I've got yeah, to say, br- really well, brilliantly yeah. so. Um, and I know, you know, the con- any concerns that I ha- had that possibly, even though I say it's a spin off of a, of an arc from. Strangers in Paradise, 
and certainly characters from the Terry Moore universe are, are in this. You, you don't need to know that. And no, uh, really. you, the whole... Um, and I think that's one of the great successes of titles, especially when you're spinning out from... Like, when you've created this, this sort of sea of characters and this universe, when you're spinning off and telling different tales, they always have to be accessible to someone that hasn't read your other work. They yes. just they, they just do. Um, you're, of course, you're going to have your loyal fans, and we've all got those creators that, you know, we'll just pick up all of their stuff, and we, we know exactly who the characters are, where they are with them. But certainly with an issue one, there has to be the dum-dums like me, who... <laughs> Who have gone in and just been like, <laughs> okay, I just I just want to see what this story is, and the story, as as Tony says, so well crafted. Uh, I mean, it's another example, um, you know, of Terry's line work is just beautiful. This is obviously a creator who has just over the years has honed their craft and honed their craft, and that whole sequence that is just two meet people meeting on a beach. Yeah. It's so well handled because the, the back and forth of why she's speaking to him, what's he doing there? Yeah. Why she left her hat in the sea for him to pick up. You know, there's it's just really the interplay there is so well done. And it, but, he, he takes his time to do it, but it works, you know? Yeah. That's the sort of um the beautiful thing about that is as well, because it feels natural. Um mm. the the pacing of it and there is you know there is a sort of i wasn't sure what i was gonna get I, you know I, I there was obviously the synopsis but it doesn't so much scream murder mystery you know but there were things going on and in that initial scene um with the guy that walks off and then someone follows him hmm. which builds up to a crescendo of violence that i wasn't expecting <laughs> yeah <laughs> um there's a moment that i was like holy shit also it looks great on the page. It really does. I also want to say that black and white artwork, I'm all about it. And I love that um, Terry is a creator that very much fills the page with panels, but not too much. It, it, you can read it. You know, it's so easy to read. Uh, and the mystery is really well played out. Um, I'm interested in all the characters that have, that have been introduced. And certainly by the end of issue, issue one, that I mean, there's a certain amount, there's a little amount of a uh, light sauciness on the go, um, but in but it's for the for the storytelling itself. I was sending you my Venn diagram of why I enjoy yes. his comics. Yeah, and top left was is the words would smash. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Terry Moore draws attractive people. He does. He does. Yeah, especially so, ladies. Yes, very much so, and certainly they're there's sketchbooks as how to draw books of it that, that Terry's done as well, which are well worth looking into. Um, but I just like the way he crafts a tale because it's the character based, aren't they? The story builds up and you, you're getting to know the characters as it goes along. And, and certainly um, with the further issues, the mystery still deepens, but there's still moments of there's a, there's a, there's a real sort of like moment in issue two um, in the desert, Tony. Um, yeah, like the reveal of that. Oh God, when he's that happens to him, and you're like, oh, oh God. And I was like, but at the same time, my brain was like, that's brilliant. That is brilliant writing of a sort of a villain, almost a villainous act that, in a kind of way, um, yeah. So it's it's a series that's both surprising, intriguing. There's, There's no t- real heroes in it either. No, let's face it. No, yeah, no. but you've got a bunch of uh, characters that are instantly sort of likeable and intriguing i immediately I, the, the parker girls themselves I'm, I'm immediately invested in what they're doing and their interactions one of them has the, the best name ever cherry yeah. hammer cherry hammer is the best <laughs> name <laughs> i immediately thought well, it's in a what? 70s new york punk band exactly i was like <laughs> that's my favorite character uh, <laughs> um but if you seriously if you haven't checked out and i, I mean if you haven't checked out any of like Terry's work before, I mean, Rachel Rising, which is the first one I really sort of experienced, was another example of like, wow, I can just... The thing about the yeah, Rachel Rising is you've got that series, which I think is his second longest series, isn't it? Yeah, um, that's 40, but then, page, 40 issues, I believe. Issues, yeah. yeah. Then she appears elsewhere. Yeah. So there's other series that she appears in as well, which he does a lot now, which is Parker Girls 
is an evidence of that. Yeah. Um, in more, in, in less and more C- ways. Serial but... is a spin off from Rachel Rising. Yeah. And, yep. and yeah. then, t- um, what's the one with all of them in it? Oh, it'll come to me in a minute. But yeah, they, they, she's back in that one as well. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, highly recommend it. There's lots of different. Um, there's 10 issues of this, which are all 10 are out now, I believe. Um, right. So you can just. There, there's a collected hardcover that that's on its great way. covers for that series my yeah. favorite covers i think of all of his books is the yeah. uh, the parker girls yeah they it feels very sort of pulpy novel as well doesn't it sort of pulpy yeah there's a there's mystery. a little bond moment yeah, in the first yeah, one, SP, isn't there? yeah 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 and they're certainly for a lot of the series they're very sort of striking covers ladies um, getting out of the swimming pool that's i'm a big fan of those as covers oh yeah classic <laughs> it is a classic but um yeah so that's another issue one <laughs> that you um, may want to check out and you may want to check it out before our next episode yeah no spoilers yes <laughs> that's all we're going to say for now that's folks. the most obvious thing ever yeah 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 so yeah Terry's going to be talking with us on the next episode <laughs> <laughs> you bet because we're interviewing him tomorrow yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, he is and we edit this bit out <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah after the fact so if you've listened to this on the first day then well, well done this is a limited edition <laughs> 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 no um, hugely excited to be um, talking to Terry about his work so, mm. um, so we thought yeah let's, let's recommend Parker Girls it is latest but we're going to be talking about um, lots of different lots of different subjects on next week's show so plenty to look forward to and uh, I'm looking forward to just reading the rest of this series to be fair to yeah. you I'm fantastic just, yeah. just, just great stuff and lots of great stuff we talked about on this week's episode lots of great comics mm. for you to add to your um, wish lists and beyond um, we've got a uh, we've been talking off air about um, future shows we've got some interesting and even more exciting stuff um, in the future yeah, well, literally the we went earlier we mentioned three names and went fucking hell yeah. yeah 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 so um as well as like lots of topics and interesting um topics of debate and you know comics process we're always interested in all of that and mm. we are also interested in what you want to hear us uh, talk about more on this show um yeah. there's several different ways you can get in touch with us to talk more about that you can email us awesomecomicspod at gmail.com follow us on social media at the awesome pod if you're part of the slack community hello if not, <laughs> get on it. <laughs> yeah, it's going on. Um, it's good. Because there's You've got the uh, Dragon's Claws Reading Club going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Memes yeah. channel is on fire again today. Oh, yeah. Yep. Love that. Yep. It is a very open and embracing community. If you just, you mm. know, if you want some advice about making your comic, if you want some, you know, it's not it's not a place where you get lots of people hard selling stuff. It's people who just want to talk about comics and discuss yep. them. We're all about discussion. Yeah, people Which with different is, opinions on there. Yeah, yeah. they're open. Yeah. We're open to it, man. Yeah, yeah. and recommendations certainly. Yeah, yeah. People loads of little art pages are going yeah. up, and yeah. there was a discussion about um, Hondo City this week from uh, Mega City Book Club yeah. about using sound effects as part of the sort of furniture in a in a book. That was really interesting. Nice. I think James Knight and Eamon were talking about that. Yeah, good stuff. Ask nice. for some yeah. advice on the next cover to Vanguard. In there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A bit of feedback on that. I tell you what, if you want to check out what we've been talking about on the show, the comic book wise. Can you go to acprecommends.com? Yeah. And it's got every book we've recommended uh, for several shows back. And it's run by our friend Craig Shields. Nice work, Craig. Craig, Thanks, you're, Craig you're a legend. That's like yes. amazing. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and also, like, having to edit the show and stuff, I, I, I haven't got time to do all that. So the fact that you're, you're one, of, you're <laughs> oh, one of the team now, my friend. So yeah. there you go. Did he get to watch Hawk the Slayer during the week? Vince? I haven't. I haven't yet. But I yeah. need to. I need to watch it. Uh, I got. To, I bought that. On. I bought that on impulse during lockdown on Blu-ray. On Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must have a look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's like because some of the special effects in that are special. The silly you know string. I, mean? I can't imagine yeah. that shows up well yeah. under HD yeah. HD TV. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, but we, um, despite our Hawk the Slayer chat. And tune in next week to see if I've watched it or not. Um, we are very thankful to you listening to the show, and we hope you've enjoyed it and uh, made note of the comics that we're talking about. Um, and wherever you listen to us, whether it is uh, also on the website awesomecomics.podbean.com, if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, subscribe, like, leave a nice review, helps get the word out about mm-hmm. the show, the algorithms, and all of that. Oh, I don't understand how it all works, but I know we're on other networks like Spotify, Amazon, Stitcher, Podnose, Podknife. What are the networks we on, Tony? 
We're on the pod, the pod network brought to our brought to us by our buddies from Viz called Oh Lordy, it's the Fat Slags, and the uh, <laughs> particular panel that says uh, the two Fat Slags are at the counter, they haven't got any money, and the the shopkeeper says eleven fifty, or I'm calling the police, and one of them says to him, "Hairy check," and he goes, "Okay, go on then." <laughs> Oh God! Going to pop it on the gash card. Oh, <laughs> a hairy check. Jesus yeah. Christ, guys, we were doing so well. No, no we weren't. Really. We never know. We never. No. <laughs> we never do. We that always, always, always ends in the fat slag. Yes, <laughs> strip. It usually ends up like that. Oh yeah, one's getting boned by the bloke in the shop, and the other one's taking yeah. her clothes off, ready to have a go. Yeah. Highbrow yeah. entertainment. I said it at the front, and I'm going to say it at the back. Yeah. Watch yourselves. Um, this absolutely show, lacking. Yeah, highbrow <laughs> entertainment. If you know where we can find any, so you let us know. Please, please let us know. De- desperate uh, to incorporate it on this podcast. <laughs> uh, we are junk food. We need some sort of nutritional value. No, no, seriously. Yeah. We um, obviously it's it's always a joy talking to these these two yes. every week. We're waiting for our invite onto QI. You know, but otherwise, oh god, I can't, I can't even spell QI. I just did. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I used to have sexual fantasies about Sandy Toxvig, but that all ended. Don't. Where can people find us online, etc., Tony? Uh, never on anything.com. I'm doing a sort of tops and bottoms. Tops of the long box mountain, bottoms of the long box mountain oh, every week okay. now. Every Wednesday it should be coming out. So well, as for last three. You there could you call that mining and mountaineering. Yeah, I like go. that. Might do that one this week. Yeah. Or something similar. <laughs> Dan, where can they find you? You can find me. <laughs> find me. Find me. Like that. Find me. You, you can find me online. You can read Vanguard at vanguardcomic.com and I'm on Twitter and Instagram. Find me there. I didn't yeah. tell my Russell Brown joke, so uh, <laughs> about that, so. yeah. Which, which is good. It's, it's a completely just... non offensive joke, so don't get worked up about that. <laughs> Last I've got to say it now, I have to clear the air, haven't I? Otherwise, it's. it's uh, I He's went having to see a conversation Bat- on his own at the moment. Yeah. You know, I went to see. Uh, to go sit back and do it. <laughs> I went to see Batman eighty nine on Saturday, and uh, it's like watching on screen there with the, like the cartoonish villain laughing and cackling away at his his crimes. Uh, but enough about Russell Brand on scratches. <laughs> that, that's the joke. <laughs> it was I'm not seen that in scratches no, yet. No, me neither. <laughs> but I tell you, what, Batman eighty nine. It kind of feels like a really small film. Seeing it in the cinema. Really? Because it's all, right. it's all it's all on sets, isn't it? Yeah. Like then they didn't shoot in. It, it's it's weird going back to it after not seeing it in, in the big screen for mm. God thirty plus years. But was it good? Okay. It was real fun. There the soundtrack go. is fucking killer. Yeah, it's a great soundtrack, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had that on cassette tape in my car. That soundtrack. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of awesome, uh, thank you to our lovely awesome listeners for listening to us this week. Uh, you can find me online, etc. <laughs> I almost forgot myself there because Dan, because of Dan, <laughs> Dan's joke. You can find me online, etc. At Jester Diablo. Thank you very much for listening to the episode. We hope wherever you are in the world, you're, you're happy, healthy, doing okay, reading lots of comics that get you excited, that inspire you. It's always good to yeah. know that people are inspired by yep. comics, um, no matter what they may be. And uh, so, on the next week when you're reading those comics and you're making your brilliant comics or you're just telling your friends to read some amazing comics we hope you're happy healthy we love you very much even Tony I'm not even giving, letting him have the chance to say uh, that and as always well what should they do guys they stay awesome, awesome. you gone Perfect. a bit French Review Club I went, I went a little bit, bit jazz club. It's, it's almost a little bit ASMR isn't it yeah. I don't know what that is. That's actually that similar. About Do you know what that stands for? Bye. No. Need me neither. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, your homework for listeners. <laughs> See you later. He's having a conversation on his own old show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>